We welcome you in here to the booth at the Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy along with Jamie Smith for some UWF football in the Gulf South Conference. Delta State in the house. It is homecoming 2019, Jamie, and we expect a good one this afternoon. It should be. I mean, you have two teams at the top of the GSC right now, undefeated in conference play. Uh, we're really in the same position. Uh, we talked about it. Coach Chinnick talked about it on the pregame show on the radio. Uh, these are two teams, two identical teams, uh, just vying for and jockeying for position in the GSE right now. Both teams come in 3-1. and one. Both teams are 2-0 and oh in conference play. As you see Delta State taking the field, only three teams in the GSC came into this week without a loss. Everybody, everybody has been beating up on each other. Valdosta State, the other, they've already won this afternoon beating Mississippi College. So somebody will stay at the top of the rankings here. Both teams come in hot. The Argos have won three straight, including an overtime win right here last week over Mississippi College. And then, of course, Delta State beat North Greenville last week. North Greenville pulled off an upset today, so it's all over the place. Argos getting ready to take the field. There you see some of the captains, including Sam Vaughn, third-string quarterback, heading out for the coin toss. I see Coach Kent Morgan getting his, his gang ready to roll out. This is always one of the most fun parts of the pregame as the Argos take the field in front of a great crowd here this afternoon. Homecoming, it's a blue out, and they're wearing these new Navy uniforms. Here come the Argos. You see Josh Smiley, big number nine, leading out there with the flag. Always great to be the guy carrying the flag out. Jamie, we're looking forward to really two defenses that are playing exceptionally well, butting heads here today. Yeah, I mean, you have two of the of the best defenses in the, in the Gulf South Conference today. I mean, Delta State comes off hot. Uh, their defense only giving up around 286 yards per game. That ranks third in the GSC, and then you have West Florida on the other hand side, who is uh, playing good as well. They rank 21st nationally, only giving up 200 or 272 yards per game. So number one in scoring defense. Lumen May, a commissioner, county commissioner here, and that hiding back there in the black shirt is Fred Robbins, Super Bowl champion. Went to Tate High School here, Wake Forest, and played with the Rams. And of course, the Giants have won a Super Bowl. Honorary captains today as well. This is going to be a good one. Delta State gives up 75 yards on the ground a game, and I, I think Coach Pete Shinnick wants to establish his running game, try to enforce the will of this Argos team. And then Austin Reed could be a key. The redshirt freshman quarterback for this Argo team leads the conference in passing statistics. Can he open up and unlock this Delta State defense and put some points on the board? before this one is said and done. We're getting ready to take a quick break here, just a quick one-minute break, and then we'll come back and get you ready for kickoff between these two teams here on the UWF Sports Network. University of West Florida Argonaut Football on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. It's not just the capital city, but the hub of all things Louisiana. And by... Can Air Federal Credit Union, enhancing lives through exceptional service, strength, and financial solutions. For more college and high school football coverage, check out yourview.com. Welcome back to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith with you for some Gulf South Conference football. Homecoming always has a different feel, a little bit more energy outside the stadium. You had more people tailgating today, Jamie. Uh, you know, I would say it's, and it is, it's a beautiful October afternoon, <laughs> October 5th. It is a little bit warm for this time of year. Normally you would be expecting, you know, do I have to bring a light jacket out to the stadium? Uh, no, you're, you're not anywhere near a jacket. We were <laughs> in the here. 90s today, the sun kind of sinking. And you, look at this beautiful shot here, Pensacola Bay in the background right there behind you. It's going to be a warm one. We've kind of said that the last couple weeks. This is the third of you know, three consecutive home games for this UWF football team. Depth is a big thing for them. They have more depth than they probably had in any other season under Coach Pete Shinnick. But on both sides of the football, could play a role today. It could. I mean, I mean, you and that can – I mean – the, the fact that Delta State likes to run the ball uh, so much that they do and uh, continue to go, you know, with that quick hit, that quick game on offense, when you have those guys you can roll in and out and keep fresh bodies in the game, that gives the offense problems. 
Both both teams like to play at a pretty quick tempo, so you're going to see a lot of snaps in this football game, a lot of that no huddle type look and getting to the line and trying to catch the defense, the opposing defense off guard should be good. Delta State will kick this thing off. Their kicker, all-conference all special team player of the week, two weeks in a row, it is Crabtree, the kicker. We were not sure if he was going to be able to go. He has a hip flexor injury, but it will be Taylor Crabtree, 86, kicking this off. And deep to return this thing, usually going to be Marcus Clayton back there, along with Dimitri Birch sometimes. Clayton is doesn't even get to him. It lands on a short man up front, and he's got some room to run up the side. We've been waiting for a big return. This could be the one. And that is uh, Gardner, it looks like, right? Jumping in there. Couldn't quite see the number. It looked like number four. You usually don't see anybody get the ball there. No, actually, Javon Newton. Yeah, Javon returning Newton. Returning that kick. Yeah, in that stable of running backs. The up back, uh, not getting uh, to Clayton on that kickoff, but Javon Newton says, no problem. I'll set us up a good field position to start the drive in. Breaks a couple tackles there, and Argos are in great field position. Dimitri Burch getting out in front of it and making some something happen. So the Argos will start. Inside the Delta State in, let's run down the offensive line starters for you. Sam Antoine at left tackle, number 52. Number 61 is the left guard, Joe Wintrick. Devin Gibson, number 65, the senior. 74, Mike Dilla at right guard. And number 50, Jacob Bruce at right tackle. First play is a running play. Argos looking to establish that. Not much happening over there on the left side of the line on the handoff. So that'll be a negligible gain on first down for Anthony Johnson. Yeah, and you see Austin Reed's stats up there, how he's been playing 61% completion percentage on the year. Uh, he's been he's going to be an important part for this offense as they continue to go today. Ten touchdowns, only three interceptions, and he can run the ball effectively. We haven't seen a ton of that. We saw it a lot in the first two weeks of the season against Carson Newman and against Shorter, but they've kind of eased back on that probably to preserve his body a little bit. That and the fact the running game has been going well. So Reed is the quarterback. Anthony Johnson starts at running back. We'll get the receivers for you after this play. Reed will throw on second down, a design rollout. As he goes to his left, he's got a man downfield, finds the seam and finds Tate Latio, his safety blanket. You know, Linus had one in the in the Peanuts cartoons, and Latio is kind of Austin Reed's guy when he's in trouble. Yeah, and, I mean, Tate Latio, more of the same. I mean, he's been that sure-handed guy no matter who's been behind center for the Argos. Uh, sure hands, and he does it again. Argos have a first down there. Good, sharp, accurate throw from Reed. Latio will start in the slot. Kevin Grant. Number 15, the big fella, KG, caught the winner last week against Mississippi College at one wideout. Rodney Coates, number two, dynamic playmaker on the other side. And then the tight end, when they go to a tight end, number 80, to carry Jackson, the big fellow as well. So here we go. First down, the ball inside the 30 of Delta State. A quick handoff and nothing happening over there. Smothered by this Delta State defense is Anthony Johnson. And that's what they do. I mean, you see, you see Delta State with – about six to eight guys in the box every single time. And here, Johnson just has nowhere to go as he's blanketed. Zane at that time. Samuel jumping in there, number 37, and then coming up, uh, you know, for the defensive backs as well. Actually, that was Marvin Terry Jr. Where's number 15, but he's a defensive end. So the defensive line solid for Delta State early. Second down, and you lose a couple on that play. So you're looking at about a second and 12, second and 13. Reed wants the snap. Gets flushed up in the pocket. Got a man open in the middle of the field and into the end zone for the touchdown is Dimitri Birch. Both officials give it, so touchdown Argos. Wasn't sure if the knee went down first, but it'll go for six. And how about that, Jamie? And what a great job by Austin Reed. Pressure coming from both sides in the pocket, and you'll see it here on the replay. Austin Reed does a great job in stepping up in the pocket and allowing Birch to just get downfield. You see him here step up, avoid the rush, and a great, a beautiful throw. Birch wide open. And you have the rest. You have the electric slide on a wedding dance floor. That's the Tom Brady slide. Austin Reed, a redshirt freshman. That's a savvy move for a young kid. Just that little shuffle step forward. Finds and he was wide open. Nobody around Dimitri Birch. So here we go. Alex Virgilio on for the extra point. The kick is up. The kick is good. The Argos take a seven nothing lead. And just like that, the homecoming crowd is feeling it here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. You're watching Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. Change doesn't happen by luck or chance. It doesn't quit, it doesn't give up. Real change occurs in that split second. A moment of connection among people. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits.
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at penair.org slash about us. We're back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith dream start for the home team. The UWF Argos go on the first possession of the game, drive right down the field, and come up with a beautiful touchdown pass. Austin Reed to Dimitri Birch. And, and Jamie, we've talked about this team not getting off to a fast start a couple of times. Not the case here today. No, and I think you, they just took advantage of that man defense that Delta State loves to play. I mean, when you have so many guys in the box like that, it leaves you susceptible to, to think, things like that. Heads up play by the redshirt freshman quarterback as he just uh, we, we touched on there on the replay that we saw before we went to break. Slides forward away from the pressure. And that nice job of the offensive line of, of directing the rush upfield and past him. And this Argo offense gets it going. And we, we talked about that pregame and right as we came on the air here on TV that maybe this Delta State defense is susceptible to the, the passing game. They're very tough against the run. We saw that play out on the first drive. Yeah, that can set up a big day for Austin Reed if that continues. Colton Norris with those tennis ball shoes set to kick this thing off, looking to punch it deep. This one is going to be returnable, bringing it out from just about his own goal line. Good return on for Delta State. They'll get this ball out past the 25 and set up shop there for this offense. Quarterback by Brett Ruddick. He's a senior. He's a guy that's been a starter for this Delta State Statesman team before. And then he got injured last year. Patrick Chigog stepped in for him. Chigog broke a collarbone in the game earlier this year, so it's Ruddick's turn again. He is wearing, don't adjust your set, he is wearing number 93. We don't see quarterbacks wear that number very often, if ever. Yeah, and the good thing, we've seen both of these quarterbacks. Ruddick came down here in the loss when we took that to Delta State, so we do know what both of these quarterbacks and their tendencies are. That big kickoff return really set up the UWF offense. They went four plays. 43 yards as they throw on first down. Delta State does getting Ruddick in rhythm. He finds a receiver out there on the outside for a short game with the catch. That is L.J. Hawkins. And there you go, quick game. And uh, we talked about it before the quick pregame show, just a quick comeback route here on the outside. And defense does a great job of game tackling and only holding them to about four or five on that play. So across this, this Delta State offense, you have Ruddick, number 93, at quarterback, starting back there, running back with him. That is Dion Dampier. Number five in the backfield with him. Four wideouts on this play, second down and about six to go. Another quick throw. And you see the strong arm from Ruddock. Gets a block outside with his receiver in the flat. That is Demarcus Johnson. And it looks like he may have the yardage over by the sticks to pick up a Delta State first down as they'll move the chains. Let's run across the rest of this offense for you. Up front, left tackle, 71, Damon Moore. Left guard, number 57, Keenan Davis, 78, Ennis Claude is the center. 79, Tristan Mosley is the right guard, and Nicholas Melsop is the right tackle, number 73. So here we go, first down and 10, ball just across the 35. Another quick out. Here comes the defense, and you're getting hammered. That's Trent Archie stepping up. And Trent Archie saw that play from the get-go. They were trying to set up a quick screen on the outside, and Trent Archie did a great job of just attacking upfield, beating his guy, and <laughs> take the blocker, come through, come take the clean. blocker with you, right? Yeah, Trent Archie, very physical player and shows it there. Loss of one or two on that play, so already behind the sticks a little bit. This Delta State offense on this second series as they picked up a first down. Now they face second and long. Ruddick set to take the snap. He's got two out wide to his left, a single on the short side of the field. Time to throw. He's looking downfield. Nobody open. He goes, and he's going to get Gail Laron around his ankles, and then eventually a bunch of Argos bringing him down, jumping on top of him there at the end. Matthew Gotell. It's a nice job of bringing some pressure from Coach Darian Doolin and company. Exactly. Even better job by the secondary of allowing. I mean, he went through all of his reads there, just nowhere to go, and that gave time for Laurent to come in there and get the sack. Great we've, job by the defense. we've seen Gale really fly around the last couple weeks, and he's taking you know, next man up philosophy. Stepped in with Andre Duncombe, the senior, the, the leader on this defense being out. Gale Aron has really stepped in and played very well. So third and 16, loss of four on the sack there. Brings up a big play. Checking back to the sideline, Delta State looking over. Their plays kind of run through their head coach, as does for UWF to kind of run through Todd Cooley. 
And they don't like what they see. They're going to have to get a timeout there. That'll allow me to set the, the receivers for you. 16 is Jalen Browder. Number 11, K.J. Breland. You'll see number 83, Tony Daggett as well. And number 17, Leon Green. They'll run four receivers out there quite a bit. Not a, not a whole lot of tight end play from this Delta State team. What do you like that you've seen early from this defense other than just the energy, which we, we do need to mention? I mean, we've seen this the last couple of weeks really flying around for this UWF defense. Well, for one, yeah, they're flying around, and clearly you can see that. But they're playing assignment football, looks like, early, especially in the quick game. So, I mean, you've seen it on the last play, but Trent Archie does a great job of getting off his man and basically just playing physical football and allowing him to get to those quick wide receiver screens. If they can continue to do that, it's going to give Delta State trouble. We, we kind of said with this UWF team, they haven't played really a complete game. They've played maybe a complete half against shorter second half there. Uh, you kind of throw out the Lynchburg game just because of the competition, and you're kind of waiting for offense and defense to really all be on the same page for a whole four-quarter experience. We'll see if that plays out today. So far, really nice start for this team as they'll force the third and 16 for Delta State. Delta State already down 7 nothing, just like that in this ball game. Ruddock has three receivers out to his left. They go with the run, and they go nowhere. Not even back to the original line of scrimmage. That is going to force a punt. Another nice job in the middle from this UWF defense. I see Kelly getting up off that pile. There's Chandler Ferguson as well. Yeah, T.J. Kelly and them clogging up the hole there. Uh, great job by the defense. Uh, DSU trying to catch the defense sleeping there in that long yardage situation. Chooses to run the ball, but those big boys on the front are not fooled, and Delta State will be forced to turn the ball back over. They're not having it. Gain of three, so a fourth and 13. That'll bring out the punting team. This is Sam Barge, number 22, back to take the snap. Snap is good. The kick is up. This is a good kick. Turn it over. Fair catch is called for and made by Dimitri Birch. So the offense will go back out there. Looking to do it again to drive down the field, put some more points on the board. I kind of, you know, when you see that first drive, you love the play calling, and that's going to come through Coach Pete Shinnick, who is kind of the de facto offensive coordinator and the head coach. But you mentioned Caleb Nobles, former quarterback for this Argo football team. He's down there. He's involved in some of the play calling. is is grooming to maybe be an offensive coordinator, an OC down the road. And when they're taking the run away from you, go to that passing game, and we saw some, some beautiful adjustments on that first drive. We did. We did. And, uh, you know, Delta State stopped the run on that, on that last drive, but made the adjustments, and the pass game is what got them in the end zone there. So here we go, going at it again with this offense. The ball is on the 20, first and 10 for the Argos. They'll go back to the run, mixing it up with a little bit different pace in there, and that is coming through, making his move, Jervon Newton, who had a – whale of a ball game last week 100 yards and really set the tone in the second half and a bit of a draw play here a delayed handoff newton gets the ball able to get past a couple defenders for delta state uh khalil johnson makes him miss and picks up about three or four on that game they're gonna call it second and seven i like the ball security too because guys were grabbing at uh, javon's arm trying to strip that football out so second and seven we'll see if it's a run or pass kind of option play Back to the middle of the line. They'll go with the run again and pushing that pile, this offensive line, before the whistle is finally blown. Always, always interesting. Kind of a rugby scrum. Everybody hugs, and Newton picks up a couple yards. And they hand it off to Newton again on the inside handoff. And they're staying true uh, to what Coach Chinnick said earlier in the show. I mean, he wants to be balanced on offense, and they're going to continue to try and run the ball. And uh, they pick up about, about four, four or five on that play. Sitting with Coach Chinnick, we were taping the pregame radio interview and he, he was showing me some defensive sets from Delta. They walk as they, you can see here a lot of guys up near the line of scrimmage so they are susceptible to the play fakes if you can make it happen. This run is going to come up a little bit short on third and two. Not quite sure that he got there. Yeah it's going to be about a foot short. So what do you do if you're Coach Pete Shinnick at this point? They're going to run the punting team out there too deep in your own end. If this ball's out closer to the Argo head in the center of the field, Jamie, I got a feeling you're seeing a go for it on fourth down. I think you would, but uh, since you're still in your own territory, I mean, your defense was great last drive. I mean, go ahead and be safe at this point in the ball game. Go ahead and kick it away. Not really what you were looking for in your second drive to go three and out, but uh, this is a tough Delta State defense, as we've referenced. They, they are up amongst the conference leaders in several categories as well, so that'll bring on the punter. Dawson Hamlin, we interviewed him for the coaches show on TV this week. This guy's been great the last couple weeks. Gets off a good kick here, drives the return man back a couple yards, and then the special teams getting down the field all over the man. Love to see that. 
jumping in. And so the Argos will go back on defense here up 7-0, 744 left to play here in the first quarter of this one. You're watching Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. As we aim. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Welcome back into Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Beautiful Saturday evening here by the Bay. Pensacola Bay in the background, the unique stadium in Division II college football. Baseball stadium home for the Pensacola Blue Wahoos, double-A team, and converted to football here for this homecoming matchup between Delta State and the University of West Florida. Statesman back on offense, second possession. Deion Dampier looks like he's going to get to the outside, but having none of that and sliding over and coming in to make the tackle. Wow. Who was that exploding over there? That's going to be De'Anthony Bell. Yeah, De'Anthony Bell coming up. Pre-safety position. Does a great job. Open field tackling. Uh, that could have went for more uh, for there if, if he wasn't to wrap up in the open field there. Yeah, that looked like it was going to be a big play right from the start. Instead, a three-yard gain for Dampier, and it's second and seven. They'll go back to the running game. Dampier again. Nope, kept by Ruddick, the quarterback. Good play fake, and number 93 gets out of bounds after picking up a good chunk. Game's going to go for near 20 and a Delta State first down. So everybody kind of biting on the fake. Yeah, and that time Ruddick shows you his athleticism on that play, choosing to keep the ball on that on that option play and puts Delta right at that 50-yard line there. He looks like a quarterback. He's got that, uh, that Trevor Lawrence hair thing happening right there, wearing number 93, and he's going to throw here on first down. He's got a man open in the flats of the quick passing game. L.J. Hawkins, again, I think his second catch is a good gain on first down. And again, they go, they go with a quick hitter here, another comeback route, and they hit it for about six on that play. I didn't get a chance to shout out uh, on the punt, the long snapper for UWF, Wyatt Adams, came down and made the tackle <laughs> on that punt return. So you love to see the guy who fires that ball back there to Dawson Hamlin hustling down. And, and Wyatt is not a big kid. You know, Wyatt's running six foot 190, but he was, he was flying down to get involved in that play. And you know, they, they like the action too. And Argo hurt. It's going to be Gail Laurent. Yeah, Gail Laurent, which would be a big blow for them. You're already short Andre Duncombe over there at that position. So, all right, it's coming off under his own power. Looks like something that maybe they get over. Yeah, he's saying kind of pointing to his chest, stomach area there. May have taken a hit right at the end of that play. The old knock the wind out of you. Yeah, he was able to run off the field under his own power, and that's always a good sign. So the Statesmen have moved inside UWF territory for the first time tonight. Ball at the Argo 44. Second down and five to go. Ruddick awaits the snap. Man in motion in front of him. Two receivers out to his left. He'll hand off to Dampier in the middle of the line, and he'll get a good forward push, and this one's going to be up close to a first down. We'll see where the mark is. Yeah, very close there. It looks like he gained about three yards on that. Well, more than they're that. They're giving the him. Yeah, they're moving the sticks. So they gave him about five there, and you see that push from the offensive line, five or six before really any Argo can get to him. And then you got a couple guys on the bottom of that pile hanging on for dear life. Yeah, Delta State moving the ball better than they did in that first drive. Looks like this offense is starting to get, to get clicking here. Be a chess game back and forth. You know, matching this time a fake handoff. Ruddick's going to roll out looking downfield. He's got a man, but he's going to throw this thing low into the dirt in front of his intended receiver. Over there, that's K.J. Breeland, number 11, on the 
just not close enough to make the reception. Yeah, Ruddock rolling out to his right there. Does a great job of finding a man open. Actually had a chance to catch it. It came it's off his a, hands Not there. able to corral it. Couldn't make the sliding grab. So that'll bring up a second and 10. Delta State kind of taking a shot there on first. They had been running the ball very effectively. Now, now you face a second and long. Dampier's the back. Oh, that ball just came out. It looked like Ruddick was going to throw a quick out, and instead the ball went straight into the turf. Would have been interesting to see. And yeah, they're calling it a fumble. Whether or not his arm was moving forward or not. Oh, his running back, Dampier, ran into the ball as he was trying to take it back to throw it. And he was fortunate enough to get on that ball because he had uh, Durante Jordan yeah. coming right behind him. Right there. So that will bring up a third and about 13. So definitely behind the chains now. Rodig with Dampier off to his right. Two receivers to the left. Single on the right side of the field. Here comes the pressure. rodick has got some room to run. And he's going to get not enough for a first down, but probably pick up eight or nine on the carry. We'll see. Inside field goal range, of course, this offense has Taylor Crabtree, who is leading the conference, 9-12 and 12 in field goals, 11-11 11 11 in point after. Fourth and probably a five or six here. The ball is going to be spotted. Let's see where they, where they finally pushed him out of bounds. Offense is staying on the field. Yeah, they're staying on the field. The ball is about the 35, maybe inside of the 35, so it would be a long field goal, maybe outside of what and Crabtree, who I was told before the game, has a hip flexor injury, so it might be outside of his range. Or maybe they're looking to draw offside. It's hard, you know, you never know if the coach is looking to make something happen. But they're going for it here. Nothing to lose on fourth and six. Ruddick pump fakes, has a man down the field, and the receivers run out of bounds. There's going to be flags thrown on that one just about every time. This is more than likely going to be a pass interference. Probably ball. pass interference. I mean, it was whoever I couldn't see who was in coverage over there, but definitely pushed the receiver out of bounds. Holding, maybe defensive holding over here. I think they're going to get the Anthony Bell. Is it Bell over there on that sideline? But that's that's a costly penalty. And I guess what, you know, the defensive back, you bite on the pump fake, and the guy's behind you. Sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. You take the penalty rather than giving up the touchdown. That's tough, too, because that ball was uncatchable. Yeah, that, it was thrown that, out of bounds for you. sure. And that's, you know, that, that could be the argument, too. If you're the coaches and the referees over here are having a – discussion is that was that if that ball's uncatchable then you throw out the pass interference yeah you could possibly pick pick the flag but back yeah. up let's see what the call is if they've decided on what the call is pass interference number eight of the defense 15 yard penalty from the previous spot automatic first down they get Sherrod Oliver on that one over there on the sideline and I think there was, it looked like there was a discussion there about whether or not it should be picked up or not. But in the end, this, this one hurts the Argos. It'll move the ball deeper into their territory and set up Delta State. And Delta State dodges a bullet on a fourth and six with the ball that was really thrown away. But the pump fake got the defensive back. Sherrod Oliver gets called for that one. So here we go. Ball at the 19. First down. Middle of that line closes quickly, and there's a swarm of blue pushing everybody back. And some big bodies, some big boys. Feasting and that's Gail Laurent right back in the action there. Uh, looks like that's going to be that's going to be Dan Pierre on the carry. Gail Laurent right in that action. Yeah, I mean, was, he may just got back to the line of scrimmage on, on that run. There was a hole there for a second, but it didn't last very long. And you see big um, Daniel Feastiak jumping in there, number 59, big defensive lineman. So a lot of guys playing early. We're already past the two deep, and you got uh, some guys in there. Direct snap to a running back. And the helmet goes flying there at the end of that one. That's a, that's a lick at the end of that play. Number 31 with the carry. That was Robbie Evans, who's a running back, a freshman out of Boynton Beach, Florida. They snap it directly to him, and in the end, he takes some punishment. Yeah, they go out of that Wildcat formation to try and uh, throw a new wrinkle for the for the defense, but nothing going there. So defense look, does a great job. Looks like a third and seven here. Ball is just outside the 15. We'll call it the, the 16 and some change. Ruddick back in there taking the snap this time. Four wide receivers, and they're letting the pressure come. Gets a block on the outside. It's going to be enough. It's hard to tell, but it looks like it's probably enough to pick up a first down. That was a well-designed play. I saw some hands fly up in the air. Jalen Browder with the catch. And they let the pressure come, and then there's a block there. Nope, not, no call on that one, and it's going to be a play that picks up. Nope, a little bit short. A little bit short. So the spot makes it fourth and one. The ball at the 10. 
And I think they'll get Crabtree on the field now for the field goal attempt. A little bit short to try. No, they're going to go back to bring Evans again in for a direct snap out of the Wildcat, it looks like. You got you substituted, so you have to let the defense substitute here. I can't count that quickly how many guys are on the field. Yeah, they, maybe they thought it was going to be a field goal. It's not. They go back to the Wildcat, and that's not going to go anywhere. Hello. Gang tackle puts Evans on his rear end and gives the ball back to the Argos. And I got confused. He's, <laughs> small, he's about as small as the kicker for Delta State, but... I mean, look at the yeah. penetration there by the D line. Able to get in Big there. Big Ian Bush, the first guy. Ian Bush dropped to a knee. That's how small Evans is. Bush goes down to a knee and just meets the running back. And uh, that, that's definitely physics in motion, physics in action. The big body wins that one every time. Yeah, and Ian Bush does a great job of just creating penetration, able to get back there and uh, stop Delta State. They list Ian Bush at six foot 275. I think that's a little, little light maybe on the weight into that equation. Robbie Evans is listed at 5'8", 190, and they may have inflated Robbie Evans' weight a little bit. So you're probably looking at a guy with a minimum of a 100-pound weight advantage, maybe a little bit more. So that's one you're not going to win if you're Robbie Evans. Yeah, probably 10 out of 10 times. That's, uh, that's going to be going towards the defensive guy's favor. So the pass interference call cost a first down on a, on a fourth down play. Defense makes up for it with a big stop deep in their own end, and that's yeah, you got to wonder at this point, is that just the coach deciding fourth and one, this part of the field, I want to make a statement and go for it and try to get seven on the board? Or is that a case of Crabtree? It, I mean, we saw him kick off, but is he hurt? Is there maybe something going on that they don't want to run out for a field goal? Yeah, you never know if he, uh, you know, if he re-injured that, that, that hip flexor injury on the kickoff or if something else is going on. Um, but... I'm sure the defensive guys kind of took that as a sign of, you know, disrespect. And, and me being a, a, a defensive guy, you always want to go out there and show them what you're made of. Let them know. No, not, not in our house, not on homecoming. By the way, I mean, this, and this speaks to this, 83% score rate for Delta State in the red zone, 15 out of 18, but only 39% touchdowns, 7 of 18. Argos are way better on that end as far as touchdowns when you get into the red zone. So there's another, it's an issue for Delta State if you look at the numbers, and we just saw that play out right here. So here you go, back on offense at your own 12. And we can't even get the playoff before flags come flying. And, and that when you see Devin Gibson that far back in the backfield, you're wondering if somebody hit him before, before he had a chance to snap it. We'll see what the call is here. Yeah, that's going to be a neutral zone infraction of some sort. Uh, defense number 92, five-yard penalty. Still first down. So an easy, an easy five yards, unless you're Devin Gibson. Then it doesn't feel so easy because he got bowled over a little bit. So that'll that'll cost him. Yeah, big fella in the middle trying to anticipate that snap count. I think that's Khalil Johnson, number 92, and he is a big kid. So a first and five. What do you do here? Playbook wide open. They'll go with Anthony Johnson. He's got a hole there on his right. He's going to get through, pick up first down yardage, it looks like, with some tough running. Good job. There's Joe Wintrick out in front of him. Clear in the way. And Anthony Johnson, Coach Shinnick still th sticking with that run. Johnson make a couple guys miss, uh, able to get past number one for Delta State, Tim Irvin, who's one, the senior on that yeah. defense, able to pick up the first down. Nice job on the right side of that line. Mike Dilla with a really nice block to open that hole to seal it off on the inside. So first down now, ball out to the 22. As the Argos look to get back on the move again. Touchdown on the first drive, three and out the second drive. Here they go again, Anthony Johnson, nice dancing around in the backfield, finally finds a little bit of a seam, goes forward to pick up a couple. And he does what he can there. Again, an inside handoff to Johnson. They try and get him on one of those misdirection plays again, uh, but Khalil Johnson does a great job of staying home and is able to bring down Johnson to hold him to a gain of about, about three. Nice carry there, so we'll see. Second, and they're calling it eight. Opportunity here. Haven't seen a throw in a while. After a couple of really nice throws by Austin Reed on that first drive, is this a passing down for Coach Pete Shinnick and company? Fakes the handoff, got a block by his running back, is looking down the field, has a man over that direction, Kevin Grant, but nice coverage coming over. Coaching staff, they want they want a flag. And actually, there's is that Caleb Nobles having some words for Kevin Grant yeah, you over see there? Caleb Nobles sticking up for his guy. A little bit of hand checking going on there. I thought they 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 could have threw a flag on that, but uh, as we've seen last week, those don't go always go in your yeah, direction. Not always the way you want to go right there. So that'll bring up a, a third and long, third and eight. 
And you, you knew it wasn't going to be as easy as that first possession made it look, you know, going down the field. This Delta State defense too good for that. Austin Reed looks over. Everybody's checking that. Everybody's got their little playbook there. Looking to see what the call is. Anthony Johnson slides around. Two receivers out to each side of this set. Reed with all day to throw. He's got Birch. And Birch, wow, no flag over there. And that, when you have a defensive back who never looks back on a throw, that is usually going to get a flag every time if you don't turn your head to look for the football. Yeah, I mean, you can see here, Birch just on a, on a go route here, and the defensive back never even turned or made an attempt to look at the ball. He's covering up Birch the whole time with both of his arms. That's usually a, a, a pass interference call. That's a tough one there for Birch. That is, uh, I'm going to use the word interesting. And understandable if you're this UWF coaching staff, you're hot over there on your sideline after seeing two plays in a row that were borderline is being polite and that second one is certainly a situation that looks like that could have easily been called yeah and the refs are getting here and, and uh contemplating or talking possibly about the last call but uh no flag will be thrown and uwf will, for, will be forced to punt the ball here let's check down with uh brian henry on the field unsportsmanlike number 14 of the offense that is number 14 first unsportsmanlike for the game it would be half the distance to the goal, fourth down. They are all very, very pumped up here on the sidelines. Back up to you. Thank you, Brian. And, of course, that's when the referee decides to give us the call. So you gotta, you got to control your temper, though, Jamie, even when things aren't going your way, even when you don't like the calls. And uh, obviously it got a little out of hand down there, but understandably so. So tough situation. Dawson Hamlin out of his own end zone punting. He'll be looking to bang this thing. This kind of comes off the side of the foot. Not his best kick, but gets a really good roll. The return is on. Irvin He's going to pick up a couple yards. And he'll be inside UWF territory, so gets it out of there. Hamlin probably wants that kick back. Nice job of scooping that thing up. So Delta State goes back on offense after driving down inside the red zone and coming up with nothing. Yeah, they'll be they'll be close to it if if not already in UWS territory. It looks like they're going to be right at the 50 yard line to start this drive. Good job of getting down there for coverage, and I'm not quite sure why the you know, one of the cover men kind of let him feel that. You you once it's on the ground, you can run up there and try to down that thing and get to that football as quick as you can. So they they let him catch it. So here we go, first down, tight formation here, interesting looking formation. Two wide receivers out to the right for Ruddick. And in the backfield with him is Owens. He pulls it out of his belly, and Ruddock will keep it and pick up a couple yards before Gail Laurent brings him down. Yeah, that time, great eyes by Gail Laurent on that play. Not fooled. Ruddock was going to try and pull that ball, but uh, Laurent sees that and makes a great tackle there. First chance for us to see Rico Owens, number two tonight, as he steps in there. Had a big game last week, 73-yard touchdown run against North Greenville. Went for a career-high 99, but bulk of it coming off that one run. Pick up a five for Ruddock on first down. That'll bring up second and five. Ruddock's looking to throw. He's got a man in the flat diving to make the catch. Looks like Browder over there, number 16, is going to be short of the sticks. Let's see what the call is. Very close. Looks like uh, they're, they're going to give it to him. him. Yeah, so another, just enough. Another quick hitter here. Uh, they find they found number 16 on the outside, Browder, um, comeback route, and he's just able to, to just enough on that catch for a first down. Just enough to come back and get the football. Knows the football just at the 40-yard line now, so – Delta State moves the chains on this possession. First down, 10 to go. Ruddick back to pass. Got time, got a man on the scene, but he's going to throw this one short and up and making the interception. Beautiful job. David Richardson with the INT. And that's great eyes by Richardson. That's not going – he's going to get credit for the interception, but I was watching it from up here, and Richardson, Richardson starts in man coverage over there in the field side, and he reads this the whole way. And he basically is playing center field right now and goes up uh, face front just to get that pick. Does a great job of reading at the high point and gets the ball right back to the Argos. All day for Ruddick to throw the big quarterback, and it, it looked good coming out of the hand. It was a nice spiral, but probably about five yards short. If he puts that over Richardson's head, it's potentially a touchdown. The receiver had gotten behind the defender, but Richardson makes a great play on the football, and that's what you ask your cornerbacks to do. That beautiful sky in the background as well. David Richardson getting full extension. I don't know, vertical leap right there. That's good stuff. Strength and conditioning staff, right? Coach Kent Morgan and company, they work on that kind of stuff. You get your box jumps in, you see it in play right there. That'll set it up here. Austin Reed and company back on offense. Ball inside the 10. We'll call it the 9 on first 
down, quick out to the outside, can't get the block out there, and Tate Latio is going to get wrapped up and taken down quickly. They try to get Tate Latio on the outside on the swinging pass here, and if he gets past the first defender, I think he may have some running room, but this is a great tackle by RJ uh, Jarrett, yeah. three, uh, Jarrett for, for, for Delta State. Does a great job of making an open field tackle. They may let they gave him the line of scrimmage back again, back to the nine, but that that was not, as you mentioned, you get the one block, that may be a first down. That's going to bring us here to the end of the quarter. 7 nothing is the score. UWF leads this thing. We are one quarter in. You're watching and listening to Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Real change occurs in that split second. A moment of connection among people. Change is inclusive. Change is collaborative. Change is transformative. Change connects. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. It's fall, y'all. It's here at Pensacola Honda with these great deals. Get a 2019 Honda Odyssey LX for $325 a month, $39.99 down. You own it. Or how about a 2019 Honda CRV continuously variable transmission, two-wheel drive LX for only $139 a month, 36 month lease, $39.99 due at signing. See dealer for details. Online at PensacolaHonda.com or Pensacola Boulevard at W Street. Pensacola Honda, home of the one price, low price guarantee. We're back here with you, Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. One quarter in the books, Delta State and the UWF Argos. Argos lead this one 7 nothing. First drive of the game right down the field, and then since then, really kind of a back and forth, and we've seen this game even out. We're just coming off an interception, though, David Richardson forcing the turnover from Breck Ruddick and this Delta State offense. So the Argos deep in their own end, facing a second and 10 to start the second quarter, and the, the Argo Athletic Band, we, we, we see them week in and week out. They A new feature last year here in the stadium. have added some members this year. Are angling before too long to be a marching band here at the University of West Florida and get out on the field at halftime. But they do a great job. In fact, they do a, a concert on the corner about an hour before kickoff right outside the stadium that it, I get the opportunity to go out and MC that event. And every week, people bringing their kids up and enjoying this Argo Athletic Band. Here we go. Let's get the second quarter kicked off. Second down and 10. After a no gain on first down, two receivers out to each side of the set, and Sam Antoine, the choppy feet. He got started before everybody else got started, Jamie. Offensive linemen hate that. Yeah, that's going to be blatant. That's, that's going to back that, yeah, that's, that's gonna back you up a little bit. First quarter stats kind of flowing through here, and really not much of a running game for the Argos. They've been kind of bottled up by this Delta State defense, only nine yards for Javon Newton and Anthony Johnson each on three and four carries respectively. So those averages are not going to work out. But Austin Reed, three of five, 44 yards and a touchdown as well. Outside of that, it hasn't been much offense other than that first drive for Coach Shinnick and company. Reed out of his own end zone. He's got time. He's looking downfield. Got a man. Good coverage over there on that side from Junior Falk as he had – Quentin Randolph kind of bottled up down the sideline, so looking to go for it there with a deep throw. And that's just going to be man coverage again. Austin Reed's trying to take advantage of it, but Falk is really step for step with Randolph on that play. Randolph tries to stretch out at the end, but 
just a little bit too far out in front. And really, you know, with, with Falk over there with three interceptions already this season, Austin Reed being smart with the football, putting it where maybe only his guy has a chance to catch it. So third and 15 now, ball inside or right about the five-yard line. Dangerous situation here. Here comes the pressure. Reed steps forward, and that has got to be. We're looking for a flag. No flag. Coates running in the middle of the field. Rodney Coates had a defender with his arm around him, unless my eyes are playing tricks on me. Yeah, it looks like the defender there hooked his arm around Coates. Right there, yeah. And maybe they're saying the ball was behind him on the throw. But, again, another situation where it's going to be force a punt. And this time, Dawson Hamlin is going to basically have his heels on the back of his goal line. So important to get the transition here. The snap has got to be a good one coming from the long snapper Wyatt Adams back to Hamlin. And Hamlin needs to get off a good kick here. He's been telling me he wants to get one to turn over. He just got this one to turn over. That ball is out to about the 50. Here comes the coverage, and there he is. Again, the long snapper flying down there. Wyatt's going to get involved again. Wyatt Adams down on that tackle. And he is not afraid to get his nose dirty. He misses uh, the tackle, but he's, he forces Irvin to hold up a little bit there, and he has help. Looks like Evan Mitchell yeah. there on the tackle. Mitchell coming through, but, yeah, you got to get there and then let the cavalry come in behind you. So that'll put the ball about the 50. Look maybe a little bit shy of the 50 or right on it. So Delta State back in business. This has really become a game, Jamie, of field possession here with 14.39 left to play in this second quarter as we've just gotten underway here in the second quarter. A, a situation where the, you're asking a lot of your defense to, to on a short field over and over and over again. The offense not able to move that ball away from their own goal line. So, hey, Waterburger fans, if you love mushrooms, then you're going to love hearing this. The Mushroom Swiss Burger is now an all-time favorite. Made hot and fresh with two all-beef patties, two slices of Swiss, two layers of premium grilled mushrooms, and a creamy au jus sauce. Available whenever the craving strikes only at Waterburger. It looks like they're backing this up a little bit. We may have a penalty call here. I didn't see a flag on the yeah, end of that return. I didn't see a flag either. Did he fair catch that possibly? Or yeah, I, I, I kind of wasn't looking to see. I was watching the ball turn over. Maybe he did. Maybe he had waved his arm, and maybe that's what the – didn't get a call. But anyways, that is going to back it up. So instead of the 50, you're looking at the 35 for this first possession, although it was right at 15 yards, so maybe there was a penalty called. Rico Owens trying to chop and find some rooms, not getting very far as he dances into the middle of that line and comes up with a short gain on first down. Looked like De'Anthony Bell getting in there around his ankles. Yeah, nothing going there. Rico Owens just trapped, uh, tripped up at the line, uh, falls forward for about two on that gain. It'll bring up second and eight. Saw Durante Jordan in on the end of that play as well. So second and long. This UWF defense so far has met the test with this Delta State offense, and They'd like to flip this field position, maybe hold him here and get the ball back in a little bit better spot on the field. Another nice job of closing holes at the line of scrimmage. And there you see, you're starting to see these defensive backs. There's Trent Archie kind of creeping in there. Some other guys getting up, Sherrod Oliver. You're starting to see the defensive backs walk up forward a little bit. And that's what they're doing. I mean, Archie's always in the action there, but you do have more guys in the box to help with that heavy that heavy run game that Delta State chooses to go with. It'll bring up third and six, another important play early in this ball game. Love to get off the field if you're the UWF defense here. Ruddick back in the gun. He's looking to throw here. He's got a man over on the side, and he finds his big receiver. That's going to be enough for a first down as he had 14 L.J. Hawkins, one of his favorite targets over there on the throw and catch. Yeah, and L.J. Hawkins does a great job of selling the selling the, the go route and as they like to do he comes back to that that curl route and Ruddick finds him right on time none of these guys are you know the size of a Kevin Grant but there's good size overall in this receiving core for Delta State you know six ones and six twos and some guys that can really make some plays here you go kind of a broken play ends up dancing back to his right Rico Owens finally gang tackled and brought down on first down yeah nowhere to go they were looking to run a stretch play with Owens on the outside there uh, to the boundary, but he cuts back towards the field and is able to make something of nothing. Picks up about five on that play. Already seeing a lot of rotation from this West Florida defense, and we've seen the two different running backs. We, you know, it looks like they're kind of dividing maybe by quarters some of the workload if you're Delta State between Dampier and Owens. Handoff goes to 
Rico Owens, and Owens is not going to get much over testing the left side of his offensive line, right side of this UWF defense. Yeah, and again, they give it to Owens and another handoff stretch play here, and he chooses, nothing. tries to get it cut up in the hole there, and the defense does a great job of just filling all the gaps. Turns into a wrestling match there at the end, and you see the big fella coming off. I think that was, was that Bush that got in there, or was that, uh, no, that, that looked like Maybe Kelly. One of the 90s, yeah, maybe yeah. T.J. Kelly coming up off the bottom of that pile. Now, again, here, if you're Marcus Clayton, you have to watch that comeback route they like to run yeah. in these situations. Third and five, we'll see if Coach Darian Doolin, defensive coordinator for UWF, brings some pressure. Nope, they kind of drop back in coverage. There's that quick passing game again, and it's going to be close. And looks, looks like the like spot may be right on the, right on the sticks. I think they're going to give him that. They're going to give him the first down Good there. Good throw again. And you're definitely seeing, yeah, he got across the 40. Nice job of tackling, though, and holding him up. But they do give him the first down. It looks to me like L.J. Hawkins, number 14, is definitely the man they are going to on these third down plays. He seems to be the primary target for Breck Ruddick. So on the move again, this Delta State offense. No points on the board for Delta State. They trail 7-0 with 11 minutes left to play in the second half. Another quick out. This time it's... Jalen Browder, number 16, over in front of his bench. He'll get maybe a gain of two, maybe three on the first down throw. Yeah, and again, they get Browder going with this with this quick offense here. This is just a, a, a one-two comeback uh, route for Browder on the outside, and he picks up about four on that play. That's what this offense is, though. Um, Coach Henny talked about it. They like to get that quick game going. Sherrod Oliver with the tackle. It does bring up a second and six, and DeMarco Artis almost got a finger on that pass. They'll go back to the run game this time. Looks like checking back in is Dampier, and he's going to pick up a couple yards and just be about a yard or two short of the first down on the second down carry. Yeah, they're going to give an inside handoff to Dampier, and he finds a lane brought down by, looks like, was that TJ? Is that, or not Limehouse? That looks like it's going to be number That's 22. That's 18, yeah. Him. Looked like 18 had jumped in there. And we had an Argo down, and in fact, with coming up after the tackle is Henry Montgomery. And he's going to walk off under his own power. So he got a little nicked up on, on that tackle, making that play. UWF training staff, excellent at what they do over here on the sideline. You already see, you've already seen tonight with Gail Laurent taking a bump and getting right back in there again. So here we go. A big play, third and two. Delta State in the UWF end of the field again as they will look back to the sideline. The state's been checking the call. And if I'm UWF, I'm finding where L.J. Hawkins is yeah, I right wanna, now. I want to know where 14 is on this play. It's a runner pass down. They'll go to the middle of the line. Hole closes up quickly, and it depends on where the spot is, and it looks to me like the official from the far side runs in, and he's going to spot it probably It's going to be very close. a half yard short. I thought they did a great job. Looks like yeah. he's going to be a little short there. Yeah, it's going to bring up a fourth and a, and a half yard or so. We've already seen down inside the 10 or about the 10, they'll, they're willing to go for it down here. And when you're at the 30, this would be from this distance a 47-yard field goal. They theoretically have the kicker to do it in Crabtree, who's been the back-to-back -back special teams player of the week in the GSC, but we don't know how healthy he is. They have not looked like they're ready to kick. They're going to go with a stretch run play on fourth down, and I don't think he got it. I think he's going to be a little short. They try to get him on the outside. Defense does a great job of swarming. Why would you not go to the middle of the line on that play? Why would you run the stretch in that situation? Both guys, both teams pointing. The camera plays tricks on angles, but it looks to me, they're going to go with a measurement, it looks like. But it looks to me like he he was short where, where he went down. Let's see. This is going to be interesting. Great job by this UWF front of really collapsing the line, getting there. Oh, he was down well before. I think if they give him this, it's a it's a spot, bad spot. spot. It's a generous, generous. spot because his elbow with the ball was down before he got to the line. Yeah, this is going to be very close, but I think he's going to be just a little short. And this is where it's different than the Division One level. Is even though we're broadcasting this game, these officials do not have the ability, and it is short. They do not have the ability to check our replays. So that'll be a turnover. Great job by the defense. And we're going to take a quick break with the two teams. Argos lead this one 7-0, 9-11 to play here in the second quarter on the UWF Sports Network. For those who sweat in determined pursuit and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile.
and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people. All group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. Hey, who are you? Oh, hey, Jeff, I'm a car thief. What? I'm here to steal your car because, well, that's my job. What? 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 <laughs> it happens. So get off stage. I'd be better protected from mayhem, like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. In Pensacola, call Melissa Keener. Bringing you back in here to Blue Wahoo Stadium in beautiful Pensacola, Florida. Look at that sky. Sunset over Pensacola Bay, one of the unique places to watch a college football game. And wow, you get some great sunsets over the water here. We got a good football game going on, 7 0. Argos over the Delta State Statesman here. Argos back on offense after a fourth down stop. They'll go to Anthony Johnson on first from their own 30-yard line. That's going to be a nice gain on first down. Looking to get this running game untracked. And still sticking with that run here. They, they get Johnson on the inside handoff, and he picks up a great uh, – or he picks up a lot of yards here on a great run, about five on that play. That's what you want on first down. If you can get that first down, a gain of five or more, it sets up all kinds of options on second down. Reed with Johnson back with him, goes to the inside handoff again. Johnson – Gets forward for about two or three before finally being wrapped up in the middle of this Delta State line, but it's going to bring up a third and short. And that offensive line is doing a great job right now, really staying on their blocks and blocking downhill and uh, giving Johnson running lanes to work with. Third and three, maybe a long two, short three situation, but this is a key down for this Argo offense to kind of get these chains moving. Their defense has been out there a bunch here the end of the first quarter and most of the second quarter. Reed looking to throw. He's got a man over in the flat. It's Tate Latio, And it's enough for a first down. That'll move the sticks. A gain of about four. Great job by Tate Latio. Just a little stick and out route on the field side. So he has a lot of room to work with here. And Latio with the sure hands he has, is, you know, he's not dropping that. And Jamie, as a defensive guy, I mean, your offense needs to help you here, right? You've been out there quite a bit. You've done a great job. Two fourth down stops. But you need a breather. Oh, yeah, and those drives do start to rack up on the defense, but they've been playing well to this point. But if you can if, if you can go downfield and give your defense just some time off here, that'll be great for them. First down, here you go. Back to Johnson, middle of the line. He finds the seam. He goes forward, picks up close to five again. They'll probably give him four. Another effective run. I'm not sure if Coach Shinnick is seeing something down there. Do you, you see Johnson going Johnson on? Said, just, just I'm a bit that there. close, yeah. And, uh, but that offensive line doing a great job of blocking. Opening up running lanes. They're going to give him about four on that run. Good job moving the sticks here and, and getting setting up a second and six. And you've already got the one first down, and you're closing in on midfield here. We'll see what the play call is. you got two receivers out to Reed's left. A man in motion makes it three on that side. It is Karan Ashley cutting across the formation, looking to throw on second down. Reed steps up. He's got a man. And here comes the flags. And that's long pass, yeah. too. <laughs> Rodney Coat kind of jumping up and down and dancing around. And, and he, he had his man over there, and it was nothing that could be done other than grab. Yeah, and that's the risk you run when you play man defense. And you have a lot of playmakers like UWF has. I mean, that's tough. Pass interference. Number 23, the defense. The ball will be spotted at the place of the foul. Automatic first down. And yeah, that's going to be Jaquan Lipscomb, the 5'11" sophomore out of Riverdale, Georgia. Not able to keep up with Coates on that on that comeback route there. That'll give the Argos the first down. Yeah, Jaquan gets called there. And, and look at that. You, you always throw your hands up as a defensive back and say it wasn't me. <laughs> but no escaping there. And that's kind of a buildup. Obviously, it's the correct call. But there, there have been a couple plays, if you've been watching, that, you know, we – the UWF coaching staff has said, hey, where's my where's my flag? And usually when you put your hands up, you're usually saying, hey, I'm the guilty party in that. That picks up the first down at the 43 on first down. Go back to the running play. This time is Newton. Newton cuts through. Helmets flying again. We're, we're seeing a lot of this weekend and week out. Helmets rolling around. But 
Nice job of getting up field quickly by Javon Newton. And this is a misdirection play. We've seen this in the, earlier in the season. They like to do this, get that defense flowing one way, and then with that quick misdirection, Newton puts that foot in the ground and is able to pick up about right. seven. Yeah, seven or eight play. on that. Excellent job, by the way. Little things of Austin Reed catching a, a low snap and still being able to get that handoff in rhythm because if not, that play is probably dead in its tracks. Here we go. Second down, and they'll call it three. They gave him seven on the carry. Quick out over to the side. It's a little high for Tate Latio. Lucky that ball didn't stay up in the air because you had a defensive back coming behind him to make a tackle who may have just landed in his arms. Yeah, pass just a little high there for Latio. Uh, maybe if he it was a little bit lower, he, he he certainly had room out in front to run, possibly pick up that first down, but it'll bring up third and three. Rodney Coates had a nice block out in front of that, you know, trying to open the way for Latio if he could catch it. Great crowd here tonight, by the way. People are still uh, moving around on the promenade below us here in the booth, but uh, people really turned out for this homecoming game, and they've got a good one so far. Not a lot of points yet, but a, a well-played football game. Here you go, third and three. Reed goes back to Newton, middle of the line. Newton's just going to power forward for a first down. That's what you call, that's a gut check carry right there. And Coach Shinnick sticking with that running game, and that's what's fueled them on this drive at least. Newton's able to shed off of one hit and keep those legs turning and pick up the first down. Just enough to fall forward. And again, I, I touched on, I think, in the first quarter, nice job of protecting the football because you see these Delta State players at the end of these tackles really trying to rake across the arms and, and trying to force a fumble. And I'm sure that's something that the staff has talked with the players about during the week. First down, ball at the 32. Argo's on the move here. They'll go back to Newton again. Newton finds running room and puts his head down, punishes Tim Irvin, the safety coming up. That's one of those where the running back delivers the pop. Yeah, and that's a great job by Newton. He had, uh, looks like, Maru Hamade on, the, on that on him as well uh, during that run. But Newton, like we've seen before, you know, giving this offense a little jolt here. They'll give him six or seven on that, on that carry. It's going to set up a second and four. You like these second and shorts. It does open up the playbook a little bit. Newton will stay in the game at running back. Two receivers out to the right side of the formation for Austin Reed. Rodney Coates, single coverage over here on the left. And Coach Shinnick told me, you're looking for man-to-man. And there it was. They were looking for that. They were a little safety help over the top, but Rodney Coates makes another Rodney Coates catch and gets a foot down. Exactly, and that is what Rodney Coates does. He's, spe he's a specialist on those fade routes, and you can see him, the concentration he has and the wherewithal to know where he is, able to get that right Drag foot it just in. down right there. And uh, even better catch or even better uh, toss out there by Reed. Shout out to the camera. The camera crew down there, the cameraman, heck of a job on that play. That's as good as it gets. I was about to start making the NFL films music in my mind here we go inside the red zone inside the 10 first and goal from the nine handoff is to Johnson around the outside Johnson's in for the touchdown I thought he might have to go out of bounds he says no thank you and remember he Jamie just a second ago he showed the coaches we're that close that's going to happen right there. Nine-yard touchdown run for Anthony Johnson Jr. Whoa, well, that 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 inch he was missing on that on that previous run. He got it that time, and great blocking from his Lati receivers out in front. Latio threw a block there. Looks like he had Rodney Coates on the outside also, and Johnson does the rest and puts the Argos up by two scores here. These Argo receivers do a heck of a job in the running game blocking, and Anthony Johnson planting that left foot, cutting it up, and he's going to put the points on the board. Alex Virgilio in for the point after the snap is high the kick gets blocked and that's going to be no good that snap was offline and Dawson Hamlin had to struggle to get it down there's a flag we see there's a flag on the field here we'll see if there's a call or what the call is Not possibly offside yeah, did somebody jump on the state. outside yeah you see the yellow flag back behind let's get the call from our referee looks like they're going to kick this again Not sure what all the nodding is for. Offside, defense number 29. Has the distance to go. Replay the try. We'll try this again. Yeah, Another opportunity for Alex Virgilio. Yeah, that the snap definitely, and maybe that was because the the snapper saw somebody moving quickly. But Dawson Hamlin did a nice job of just catching that thing and getting it down. Yeah, they're going to get B.J. Sisko, the uh, sophomore from Olive Branch, Mississippi, for Delta State there. You're trying to time that snap and get in there as quickly as you can. Sometimes you go too soon. So here we go. And, and again, he just did it again off the outside, and they're going to allow him to get back. It's kind of like, hey, can we just kick this thing? 
Snap is down. This time the kick is up and it is strong and good. That's going to make it 14 0. 504 left here in this first half. Argos lead this one. You're watching Argo Football on the UWF Sports Network. <laughs> What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. And also on Your View, Florida tonight, that is Channel 2 in Escambia County, Channel 6 in Santa Rosa County. We're on down in Gainesville and Ocala on Channel 15. And you can stream it on Your View as well. Just go through GoArgos.com or I think you can go to YourView.com as well and find the live stream. Colt Norris getting into this thing, kicking it deep and high, and it sets up the return. Nice job of coverage getting down there to make the play. Chandler Ferguson making things happen on special teams. And a bit of a pooch kick there by, by, uh, by Colt Norris. And uh, they're not trying to get that, that up back or the uh, last guy there involved. And I think, uh, I think they the force him to get him. Get the wind, the wind the may team. be coming this way a little bit, Jamie, but I like that. If, you, if you've got a kicker that can get the ball high enough in the air, Kick it deep, you know, down around the 10, but hold it up long enough. Gives your coverage team plenty of time to get down there, and you can kind of put the other team in, in this kind of field position. So 25-yard line. We have seen two fourth down stops from this UWF defense, an interception already. They are playing sensational football. Already we're leading the conference in scoring defense. They're certainly living up to that tonight. A little quick screen out to the side. Rico Owens from Ruddock is going to pick up some good yardage on first down. And we have a flag on the play. It's going to be a hold more than yeah. likely on that screen pass. <laughs> you see Gail Laurent coming up right away and saying, we're going that way, the other way. Yeah, this Argo defense is really, you know, you kind of look at that first week. They got gashed a couple times by Carson Newman. They gave up a couple big plays to Shorter when we were on the road with them in Rome, Georgia. They have really played very well since that first half against Shorter, done a nice job of not really giving up the deep plays. We saw Mississippi College drive on them, but not give up those points. They're, they're only allowing 13.8 a game. Well, and that's the motto, Ben, but don't break. And I, I think they've done that. I mean, and you, you, you forget that first week in Carson Newman when we went up to Tennessee. Uh, and they got gashed for a couple plays there. But I think you've seen this defense really come into their own and find their, their, their identity. Very stingy against the pass, only giving up 117 and a half yards a game. So they've done a really nice job. And here comes some pressure. Ruddick has to pull it down, and he had nowhere to go. It's a coverage sack and a nice job of getting back there. Here's a name we don't call all that often. Uh, jumping through there is Nate Holloway, defensive back number 39. I like these uniforms because I can see the numbers, Jamie. Exactly. The blue uniforms. These are new ones, are, by the way. Too. Great. Yeah, these yeah. are new ones this year. Great job by Holloway. He initially gets blocked up there by the old lineman for Delta, but uh, just doesn't stop, and he's accompanied there also by, yes, by uh, Brandon, 51. Brandon Pennington, who yeah, we've Pennington seen, we've, we've seen well. play a little bit this year, but tonight you're seeing a lot of guys in, in a game early, and that's a good thing. Coach Shinnick said he'd have to do a little bit of that. So on a second and 20, Roddick's going to run this thing out to his right, and number 93 is going to get dragged down there. So good job of 
not giving up a bunch of yards on a misdirection. Yeah, a design QB run, and the Gail Laurent doesn't hold yeah. the edge there, but he does he does have help on the outside, and David Richardson, who comes up and makes a great open field tackle. Yeah, good job of jumping in there to, to make a play. That might have been uh, Demarie Givens, actually, number 10, wasn't it, that came up and made yeah, Givens came up and made the tackle there. So you're seeing some guys in the beyond the two deep on a hot, humid night getting this game early here in this half. That'll bring up third and long. Throw to the middle of the field. Finds a man. This is going to be a big play if they don't get him on the ground. Finally, the tackle is made there by Josh Smiley. A little bit short of the first down sticks. Yeah, and that time Ruddick finds his go-to guy again and L.J. Hawkins on a crossing route here. And he does have – he racks up a bunch of yards after the catch here. He does pay for it. Boy, yeah, Ruddick, Ruddick barely got that away. Some good blocking downfield. But excellent job of just staying in pursuit by Josh Smiley, who is really – He's one of these glue guys on this team. He's been around since the beginning. They've brought in some other linebackers, but you're still counting on a Josh Smiley to make plays like that. That'll force a punt. Fourth and two, they're not going to go for <laughs> that one again. They've already run out of luck on fourth down. Flags come down, whistles blow before the kick. We've got Karan Ashley and Dimitri Birch back to return. We'll see what the call is, maybe on Delta State. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get him for a false start penalty as Coach Cooley's. False start. Offense number 26. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Yeah, you're right. Coach Cooley Coach showed Cooley's up with that shot over there. there. Wasn't, yeah. Wasn't happy with somebody. Not too happy. And that's costly because you're, you're pretty deep in your own end here. So, you know, you're costing yourself field position. So back to punt. Sam Barge looking to get a good kick, trying to put it back and pin UWF back again. He's going to angle this thing over. Good kick. Really pushes Karan Ashley back. Dimitri Birch got a little bump of a block, and you got a wall set up down the left side. Karan Ashley with room to run. Finally, they get to him and get him out of bounds, but he got a flag back about the 35 in the West Florida end. Two flags, in fact, so they got somebody. I thought Birch had pulled his hands back. We'll see what the call is. Another big returning, you know, we saw Anthony Johnson, Jamie, with his, you know, we're this close. I feel like we're this close in the return game, but it's these these kind of things that are costly. Yeah, penalties always hurt you. Uh, and I was with you. I thought Birch held up and did a good job of that. It may have not but been Birch. It may have been something as we got over towards the sidelines. We'll have to see who they call it on. A lot of times you don't block somebody. You just get your body. During the away. return, personal foul, blindside block against the return team. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Somebody took liberties, as we say. But the ball will be over to West Florida. They'll start from their own 28. We'll take a break here. 14 0. 204 left to play here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. You are watching and listening to Argo Football from Pensacola, Florida, right here on the UWS Sports Network. Make your goals happen. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. with you from Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith, good college football matchup here. 
Two teams at the top of the Gulf South Conference standings. Delta State University of West Florida Argos lead 14-0 as we approach the two-minute warning here in the first half of this one. Into the middle of the line on the handoff on first down after a punt and a penalty. Took away a beautiful Cron Ashley return. UWF starts at their own 20, it looks like. Yeah, 20. And getting into the game for the first time, this is the first time we have seen Jaden Gardner tonight. Yeah, and they try to get Gardner going on another inside handoff, but that looks like Khalil Johnson again, who's been active all night for that Delta State defensive line, is able to drop him for a gain or a loss of one, rather. It's a clock running here. Usually Pete Sinek is going to try to put points on the board if he can. We'll see, though, if he's in any hurry to try to get down the field or if he's going to try to work this clock since he's starting inside his own end. Quick one outside. Not much room there. He tried to dance away and make a, make a nice move on the outside. I'm trying to see who that is. Was that T or is that Manning? Anthony, Anthony Manning. Manning which yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah, we got to check because I, I wasn't sure if it was 18, if it was Evan Mitchell, but it is Manning, a name we have not called much of. And that's going to back up. They lose a yard on the play. I think that's going to bring a timeout probably from Delta State. Yeah, they're going to call a timeout because they see an opportunity potentially to get the football back here if they can hold here on third down. What do you do on third down, Jamie? Run the football and try to run some clock? They may call another timeout, and then they're going to force a punt. Or do you, do you try to throw down the field and get the first down? Well, you can go one of two ways. And if you run the ball, I mean, Delta State naturally takes their last timeout of the half. But – with the weapon you have in Dawson Hamlin, they do have to march down the field. And, again, Delta State likes to run the ball, so they, they don't put it up in the air a lot. So you put the team in, in an uncomfortable position with about a minute, uh, say a minute, to uh, try and score before the half end. So in my, if I was the head coach here, I would go with a running play. We'll try to see what Pete Chinnick has to say. We'll, we'll catch him. Brian Henry will catch him coming off the field before the half. By the way, the, the last scoring drive for UWF, I never got a chance to recap that. Ten plays, 70 yards. It took 4.07 off the clock. That's a power drive to get down the football field. So we've seen it go both ways, big plays in the passing game and then a drive that kind of used that ground game to grind it out. They've scored both ways tonight. Gardner Jay, stays in the game at running back. Reed is looking to throw on third down. He's got Tate Latio. Latio makes the catch after juggling the football a little bit, and that looks like it's going to be enough to get the first down. Or we'll see where the spot is. Hard to say. But yeah, they're going to move the sticks here. Latio, nice throw as Reed dances around. The ball is wobbling a little bit. Latio finally corrals it and then, yep, gets out of bounds right there at the sticks. So there's an important first down, allowing UWF to move the sticks and most likely will not have to give the football back. Yeah, to nice State. catch there for Latio. And Coach Shinnick just forget everything I just said on that <laughs> previous play. I think, uh, you yeah, know, Coach has got it. He's got his own thing, right? He's got his own, the way he likes to roll. And, and I, I wouldn't call him like a, a gambler, but he certainly is more aggressive play calling than a lot of college coaches that you run into. They're resetting the play clock a little bit after that confusion over there by the sideline. So first and 10, ball out at the 30 now, just enough to get the first down on that third down throw from Reed to Latio, picked up 11. And so here we go. Can they get down in the field goal range? And what does that look like? The kicking game's been the, really the only issue for this team so far this season. Reed with time, gets flushed a little bit, moves up in the pocket. Strong throw. There's a Tate Latio catch like we're used to seeing. Full extension and comes down with that grab. And that's, I mean, that's trademark Tate Latio. And anytime Tate gets man coverage, I mean, that is just, that should be a recipe for success for him. Tough time covering that guy. I mean, Latio's so, a complete receiver. So hard to handle out of the slot. That's enough to pick up another first down. Sticks are moving. Reed gets flushed, and he's just going to sling this thing out to the outside. That ball was hanging in the air. You got a flag coming in for interference over on that side as well on Latio. You were saying, Jamie, he's hard to handle, and that's what you have to do sometimes. Yep, and they a little, a little grab in there before the ball got there, and that's going to be called uh, nine out of ten times. I think Quentin Randolph, by the way, as I watch him come off the field, might have been open down the field that time with a chance, you know what I mean, to, to make something happen. We'll see the call. Pass interference, number nine of the defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. So you are out near midfield now, 42 seconds. All three timeouts still in Coach Shinnick's back pocket. So, you know, you could get off quite a few plays in 42 seconds if you manage it here. Not quite in field goal range yet, and we'll see. I got a feeling you're going to see something down the field here at some point, taking a shot towards the end zone, trying to pull out a big play. Delta State kind of on their heels here. Reed gets moved out of the pocket, sets his feet. He has a man open in the middle of the field. Is that Ashley? Karan Ashley with the catch. That's going to be another first down and move the sticks. 
We'll see. You got all your timeouts with 33 seconds left. The clock will start again once the ball is set. We'll see what the call is. You got a player down, though, for Delta State at this end of the field. And how about Austin Reed? Great job. I mean, he moves so well in the pocket. His feet are, are exceptional. I mean, he, he guards the ball and do everything you want him to do while he's in the pocket and is able to find Ashley at the end of that play. I think the key for young quarterbacks, and you will see this a lot, is as they're moving to their right or their left, they will not set that back foot and really push off on the throw. You, and those are the dangerous throws. When you see a guy who's kind of still, you know, he doesn't have his feet set and he kind of tries to flick the ball, those are when we see interceptions. Reed is really getting that foot in the ground and connecting with these throws. And he's keeping his eyes downfield the whole time while he's moving in the pocket. And I know that that sounds easier than it's done, but to do that when you have, you know, six foot four, 290, 300 pound guys coming at you, that's tough. And I mean, you see him. Uh, I mean, other the one guy goes down here. Reed continues to set his feet, looks downfield, and is able to find Ashley on that crossing route there for a first down. But that's a great job great by, the, by the red shirt freshman. Nice route by Karan Ashley. That was Sam Antoine burying Marvin Terry. By the way, Marvin Terry came into this game, 23 tackles, five and a half for loss, three sacks on the season. So that's a monster number 15 out there at defensive end. And a nice job by Sam Antoine of keeping his quarterback clean. And Terry had to go off the field after having Big Santone fall on top of him. It looks like we have a timeout from UWF, or the last one from Delta State. It's hard to see. That's going to be the last one yeah, for they're taking Delta. it off. So Delta State is really kind of reeling right now on their heels. And, and Jamie, this is huge because a 14-0 game, if the Argos score a touchdown here, and really even a field goal, if you but, but a touchdown, if you go in the, at half 21-0, I'm not saying the game's over, but that's a lot to come back from. I mean, yeah, and, and you you've seen what kind of defense or offense Delta State runs, and it's it's run heavy, and that's going to be a lot to come back. If you're down 21 headed into the half, that's a lot, and you and you put Ruddick in a really unfair situation and saying, hey, we need to pass more and go away from our offense, what we're used what we're used to. So to do that, I mean, that's that's going to be a tough position to come back from. Yeah, the Statesmen have really not established their running game, which is the bread and butter of their offense. 200 plus yards a game is what they're averaging. So they are finding themselves already in a hole that 14 nothing. yeah, you can kind of still stay with your run game in the second half and see if you can develop a, a drive, especially early. But if not, if you fall behind further here before the half, you may be in that situation Jamie just talked about of having to air the football out. That is not what Delta State does. So here we go. First down from the Delta State 39, Austin Reed fakes the handoff inside to Gardner, and he's going to get hit. That pocket collapses on him. Under 30 seconds, we'll see if Coach Shinnick calls the timeout. He does immediately to try to preserve some clock. That time, I think, Jamie, we saw Delta State just sell out. They were going to come with as much pressure as they could bring to try to get to Reed early. Yeah, they brought one more guy than UWF could handle on that play, um, and they were able to finally get to Reed, uh, which we don't normally see a lot. He's pretty clean at the end of, at the end yeah. of all his ball games. But um, Coach Shinnick does a smart thing in taking the time out there to preserve that 26 seconds left. Yeah, just blew up the middle of that line. So actually, there's a missed assignment. It looked like somebody, Devin Gibson, and, and inside there, and the right guard, Mike Dilla, just didn't handle the man in front of them. They both kind of went the other direction and let him kind of come through. So I was going to say, was that a play that maybe Austin Reed could have checked off into a run, but it looked like a blown assignment rather than a, a straight blitz. So Argos, that'll back him up six yards, second and 16 from the 47. Are you looking maybe to come up with one throw here that gets you into field goal range just in case? Or do you take a shot all the way down the field, maybe put one of those balls up and see if you can get a Kevin Grant? By the way, I haven't seen Kevin Grant on the field in quite a while. There he is. He's over on the left side now. An opportunity to maybe get the big fella a chance to go up and make a catch. We've seen a couple of, you know, pushing and grabbing and pulling when they've been beat by these defensive backs. You may put enough pressure on them. Here we go. Second down, two receivers out to each side. Gardner is the lone running back off to Reed's right out of the shotgun. Good protection this time. He's got time to throw, and they're going deep. They've got a man. If it's on the money, it's good. Touchdown. Rodney Coates into the end zone, and the Argos strike again. What a catch. What a, what a throw by Austin Reed with 20-something seconds left on the clock. You get Rodney Coates, who I said earlier in, the I mean, in this game, eats and feasts oh, on man, man coverage, and he just beats, does a great job of beating his defender off of the line. And Reed just looks one way and gives Rodney Coates his time to get a step on his guy. And you can't walk it down there wow. and place it any better than that. Beautiful over-the-shoulder throw. I was wrong on the player right on the call. It wasn't Grant. It was Coates on the other side. And we talked about Coach Shinnick being aggressive. 
That's an aggressive call with 16 seconds left now in the half. The PAT is up and good. Argos now well in control of this football game. 21 to nothing as we are just about to halftime. And, we, and Jamie, you hit on it. This makes life extremely difficult for Coach Cooley and this Delta State team in the second half. It does. It does. I mean, this is going to be a tough position. Again, you see Austin Reed, another strike here for Rodney Coase. And he has about a step or two on his guy in man coverage. And that's just the price you pay when you run a defense like this. Yeah, that's fault, too. Uh, three interceptions on the season. The guy who's been kind of terrorizing some passing game offenses, he gets beat by Coach. We were watching during warm-ups down here. That was not that kind of catch. That was just the route past him. And yet, as you mentioned, just beating man-to-man. These guys were basically putting on a show down here in the end zone below us in pregame as Reed was throwing them balls up in the air and behind them, and guys are just making ridiculous catches. The confidence level of this receiving staff right now is off the charts. And they should be. I mean, and especially, and I know a couple guys I've, I've followed on social media uh, for the Argos, uh, they were super excited when they found out Delta State runs that man, uh, that man defense. And as they should, I mean, when you have confidence as a receiver, and you're basically saying you're going to leave me one-on-one -on -one with a guy from the defensive side with no safety help, okay, I'm going to go and show you what, what I'm capable of. Austin Williams comes on to handle kickoff duties on this one, the senior. Statement so far by this UWF football team. Williams gets into this thing, punches it down to the goal line. Is that Evans on the return? It is, taking it out from near his own end zone. Really all he can do at this point, that'll lead about – six or seven seconds off the clock. So probably going to be take a knee and go to the locker room and try to figure out what the heck you're going to do. Delta State will get the ball to start the second half. And you feel like that is going to be a make or break drive. It will. I mean, that's going to be an important drive when the second half does come up. I mean, if you don't get points on that second half and, I mean, you've come in and you've, you've played, you've had your adjustments, I mean, that kind of breaks your spirits as a, as a Delta State team as they'll take a knee and uh, go into half here. 47 yards on the touchdown to Coates from Austin Reed. So a couple big ones, Dimitri Birch for 32 yards for a touchdown. Then you had a power drive with Anthony Johnson taking it into the end zone. And then now, false start is the call. Coates with the big touchdown catch and, and the Argos dominating this football game with nine seconds left in the first half, 21 nothing. the score up on the board. We'll hear from Coach Shinnick here as they go off the field and then we'll take a break with everybody and come back and we'll talk about homecoming with uh, Eric Brammer the Alumni Association is here and then we're going to bring you on TV the homecoming festivities during halftime on the radio we've got some other interviews that we'll, that we'll share with you as well but we're trying to get to Coach Coach Shinnick here as we get ready to go to the half and as soon as we see Brian uh, set with them but those three drives definitely the story of this half the defense with a couple of fourth down stops to get off the field and then David Richardson with that big eye and T Everything is working for the Argos right now. Everything going their way as they're really dominating Jamie on both sides of the football. And I see Coach Shinnick making his way towards the tunnel and Brian Henry is flagging, flagging. down. We'll, yeah. get, we'll get ready here. We're just a couple seconds away from getting to Coach Shinnick. But there you see 21 nothing is homecoming set as well. Let's check in now with Brian and Coach Shinnick. Coach, you've said before that if you get the ball before the end of the half, you're going to do your best to try to score, and that was, that was a great little drive you put together there. No, great job by our defense all half. we got to have that in the second half, but uh, great job on the offense, executing, getting those points on the board. That was huge. Uh, how pleased are you with your running game? You're, you're chicken away, chipping away at them. Yep, keep wearing them down. we just got to keep after it. Okay, good luck in the second half. Thank you, Brian, and we will see what plays out in the second half here. We'll take a break and we'll come back and we'll get you ready for halftime. You are watching and listening to UWF football here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us.
for those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Back with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy joined now by Eric Brammer, the president of the UWF Alumni Association, enjoying a homecoming oh game, my gosh. I would imagine. What do you think of the first half? This is fantastic. Are you kidding me? What a great view you have up here. This isn't bad. Yeah, this is – we talk about it. What a unique stadium to play in. Yes. Blue Wahoo Stadium here. Uh, from a fan standpoint, from you know alumni standpoint, it's, it, it's really cool not just to have football, right. but to be able to play in a setting like this. The one thing I we were uh, the wife and I were downtown. We were talking to some fans beforehand and who had never been to a football game, and we're like, we've been every year. We can't fathom that. But then you come in here and you look, and we were talking to them. You're watching football, and you're looking at the water overseeing the, the stadium, and just the crowd and the passion and the fact that the band is there and the student body's there and the energy that's created. It's this is a fantastic time. Homecoming is a special time, and it is weird to think this is already the fourth one with I know, football. I know. And, and people were asking me, what was home? And I, I graduated a long time ago sure. from UWF. You know, what was homecoming like? I said, well, I don't remember. <laughs> one, right? and I think, right. and honestly, I think we played some soccer games and did it yep. at different times yep. of the year and things like yep. that. This is this is the more traditional experience, yes. I think, and great for the students, yes. but also great for those of us who come back home, come back to the university. And I met some people last night. There was a, a tailgate. Yep. Down behind the Wentworth Museum yeah. in downtown Pensacola. Yeah. I met some people from the Dallas area, yep. people from all over. It really is bringing people back to Pensacola. That's the great thing because I, I graduated in 99. I mean, that was 20 years ago. And we didn't, ha we, you know, we, we'd throw the stuff on the cannon and we had all these great traditions. But to, to meet people from 69 and 77 and people from Dallas and Atlanta that come in from out of town and they're like, yeah, we just came here for this weekend. And we're behind the TT Wentworth building. And more and more people are showing up. And you're looking around, and you're like, look at all the Argonaut gear. You, you can't wild? help but get excited about what's going on here, not only from the football perspective, but from athletics in general and then the academics. It's a fantastic time. President of the Alumni Association, and I know you traveled around too. I, I yep. know a lot of people will ask me, they'll see they'll see yes. this logo yes. and they'll say, what is that? Who yeah. is that? That's really cool because, I mean, I think, you know, one, the success of this football program and all the athletics, 101 conference championships, yep. you know, all the sports that we are super competitive in. Yep. But I think people are starting to recognize the brand a little bit. I've been, so I travel a little bit. I'm in sales and I've traveled and I'll be on airplanes. And uh, right after the national championship game, I was in New Orleans. The wife and I were walking by. I heard a go Argos throughout the airport. Like I stop and there's an Argonaut. Had you know, just, just regular. The other day I was on an airplane and a student was walking by. She was traveling. Saw my logo, go Argon. We're right there in the middle of a plane. It, to, to, to do that, to travel, to see the logo, how exciting is that? that? That we're up there with all these brands of, of, you know, all the D1 colleges that we all know, Alabama, Florida, Florida. But to see the Argonaut logo or the UWF, that's exciting stuff. They're getting ready to do the homecoming court here, and we're going we're gonna to carry that on the TV broadcast Perfect. here in a second. But this is kind of cool to see, isn't it, to, to be able to do this on the football field in front of all these people. Amazing. And then, you, again, you've got the band playing, so you've got the homecoming at festivities. This is exciting stuff. This is the, the energy that's created. What about for the people around the country, maybe watching on the stream tonight and listening to us on the radio locally as yep. well, that if they want to get involved, maybe they haven't been involved in the Alumni Association, how do they do that? For sure. So uwf.edu slash alumni. We've got events going on all, all over the place. We do travel, Atlanta, Dallas, um, Orlando. We've got watch parties. So check out, again, uwf.edu slash alumni. Uh, social media. Go on to the uh, face Facebooks and the Twitters and love our pages and the Instagram. Uh, it, it's it, again always putting stuff out there. Exciting time to be an alumni with UBF. Right. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Join the club. We'll see you coming up next on TV. We'll do the homecoming court, and then on the radio, stick with us. We'll get you broke down for the rest of the second half and have an interview with Brett Burr. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us.
Welcome back to Blue Wahoo Stadium. Will Kennedy with you. This time we're going to kick it to the in-house stadium PA announcer Kevin Peterson to take you through some homecoming festivities. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the field for the presentation of the 2019 homecoming court and crowning of your next Mr. and Miss UWF. The court showcases the diverse and talented nature of our student body. We're very proud to present 11 men and women who exemplify what it means to be a University of West Florida Argonaut. Your 2019 homecoming court, Mr. Kenneth Burnell. Kenneth is a junior sports management major from Pensacola, Florida. He's being escorted by his friend Kara. Mr. Eric Kennedy. Eric is a senior nursing major from Panama City, Florida. He's being escorted by his girlfriend, Lacey. Mr. Benjamin Martin. Ben is a senior archaeology major from Orange Park, Florida. He's being escorted by his friend, Megan. Mr. Hunter McCabe. Hunter is a senior accounting major from Pensacola. He's being escorted by his friend and SAE sweetheart, Jamie. Mr. Oren Powell. He's a senior computer information systems major from Pensacola. He's being escorted by ATO's Miss White T. Rose, Sydney. Miss Elizabeth Barrett. Elizabeth is a senior legal study major from Pace. She's being escorted by her father, William. Miss Alyssa Borelli. Alyssa is a senior mathematics teaching major from Molino. She's being escorted by her father, Anthony. Miss Maya Clark. Maya is a senior journalism major from Tallahassee. She's being escorted by her father, Mitchell. Miss Melanie Luna. Melanie is a junior athletic training and exercise science major from Pensacola. She's being escorted by her husband, Victor. Miss Jamelia Richardson. Jamelia is a senior psychology major from Ramstein, Germany. She's being escorted by her brother, Diari. Miss Mackenzie Simmons. Mackenzie is a senior communications major from Pensacola. She's being escorted by her grandfather, Dr. Peter Delavet. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 homecoming court. Now please welcome to the field our 2019 homecoming executive director, Mr. Tommy Judd. Tommy is accompanied by Mr. UWF 2018, Abraham Scully, and Miss UWF 2018, Faith Franklin. And now to reveal your Mr. and Miss UWF 2019, if your name is called, please step forward to receive your honors. Congratulations, Kenneth Burrell, our Mr. UWF 2019. And congratulations, Mackenzie Simmons, our Miss UWF 2019. And thank you again, Argos, for celebrating our legend this weekend and being a part of UWF Homecoming 2019. This is not a restaurant. This is slow smoking that stirs your soul. The stuff that makes going out feel like coming home. This is not a restaurant. It's a barbecue, 50 years in the making. Come fill up on all your favorites. Sonny's Barbecue, come taste tradition.
Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with you here at Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith. What a game we've got, Jamie. Homecoming court has gone off. The, the new king and queen have been announced. And here we are, 21-0. The Argos in front. Just I was walking through the press box here at halftime and talked to Bill Valone, a longtime writer uh, with the Pensacola News Journal, works for Blue Wahoos, now does some stuff for us for GoArgos.com. And he said this may be the best he's seen this franchise, you know, this organization, this program play since the national championship season and, and some performances there. Yeah, and it's it's kind of reminiscent of that of that playoff run a couple of years ago that the Argos had where that offense was clicking and the defense just played extraordinary. Uh, went up to Wingate and uh, pitched that shutout up there. But, um, I mean, I agree with him. Defense has played great this game, and they're pitching the shutout right now, which I'm sure they want to continue. So uh, to do that and, and, and this, deep, this Delta State team who's been, who's been great this season, uh, is, is, is a testament to how well they've been playing. We talked in the pregame and, and when we came on the air to start the game about how you know difficult this Delta State team is to run against and, and stingy their defense is. I think we suspected, at least Coach Shinnick did, that there might be the opportunity to exploit them a little bit in the passing game. We have seen that and the ability to go deep downfield. We've seen a 32-yarder to Dimitri Birch and a 47-yarder to Rodney Coates. But we've also seen the running game get untracked a little bit too. Yeah, and I mean, you've seen Johnson have some success in, uh, as well as Javon Newton, uh, who's had a couple longer runs uh, in excess of six or plus yardage or longer. Uh, but they've, if, they've, 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 they've been committed to getting that running game going. They haven't went away from that, but they have attacked and they have picked their spots to attack that defense through the air. 21-0 again, and it really has been a dominant performance defensively. We've seen Delta State move the football a little bit, but then you said, you know, bend and don't break, and especially on fourth downs, a couple fourth down stops, which is, you know, for all intents and purposes, a turnover, forcing a turnover, and then a David Richardson interception when Delta State did try to take that shot downfield. And so you look at that and think that's probably what we're going to see a little bit of it here in the second half, down 21-0. If you're Delta State and Coach Cooley, you're going to probably try to have to force the ball down. If you don't score on this first possession, then you're going to probably have to try, try to force the ball downfield, maybe the opportunity to force some more turnovers. Well, you have to because their offense, the way they run it, I mean, it's about 80%, I would say, run heavy. And they're going to have to start, uh, like you said, they don't get any points on this first drive. They're going to have to start to force some balls down the field. Let's take a look at some of the first half stats from this one and, and what a half it was for the Argos. You see the offensive production, the ability, as we just touched on, to exploit Delta State in the passing game, 148 yards for Austin Reed. The running, most of that came on the drive, the second touchdown drive, Anthony Johnson and Javon Newton, both with some effective runs. 
And so, you know, around 200 yards of total offense, that's a big one down on the bottom, the no turnovers. And that's about right where you want to be against a defense like this on track to maybe have a 400-yard game. And really, I would expect, you know, we, we talked about the aggressiveness that, that Pete Shinnick has shown, you know, traditionally. I don't expect him to just say, let's run the football and kind of take the foot off the gas a little bit here in the second half. I imagine you're going to see more of what they've been able to do, which is get the ball downfield to this just stable of wide receivers. Yeah, and you spoke about it earlier in the show. Coach Chinnick is uh, not a gambler per se, but he's more of an aggressive type play caller. And uh, they're going to continue to have their foot on the gas. You'll see more passes from Austin Reed. You'll see you'll see more runs as well. Uh, but, I mean, I mean, they're going to try and get to that threshold at that 400, 500 yard that they like to put up every Turn day. it up a couple notches. Let's take a look at the scores in the first half. As we'll recap for you. This was the first one. And Austin Reed just really doing a nice job stepping up in the pocket and finding a wide open. You don't get more open than that. Dimitri Birch, he fought himself. That was some ninja stuff to get into the end zone and not get called down at the one. And that made it 7-0. That was the first drive of the football game. And then this was the drive we talked about with the running game. Newton and Johnson taking over. Johnson turning that thing up for a nine-yard touchdown run, planting that foot, getting into the end zone. And you're up 14-0. And then the defense continues to get that ball back for you. And it was a two-minute drill type situation where the Argo offense got the ball late in the half, had all their timeouts, took a penalty, and then turned around and did this. Jamie, you talked about it. Rodney Coach just loves that man coverage, and he gets behind the defender here, gets behind Junior Falk and scores the 47-yard touchdown, and you're up 21-0 going to the half. Austin Reed having another nice game, 10 of 15. He's thrown for 198 yards, two touchdowns, a 32-yarder, a 47-yarder, so just all around. Austin Reed doing, and his composure has been special tonight. Yeah, and I mean, he's been very calm in the pocket. When there have been defenders, um, he's always felt the pressure uh, that you like your QBs to do um, and keep your eyes downfield, and his feet have been exceptional tonight in the pocket. We've seen it on that one play he had on the connection to Karan Ashley down the field uh, later on, later in that second quarter, but um, he's been great, and if you can continue to do that and have your quarterback play that way going into the second half, then this, this UWF team is going to be hard to beat. Tate Latio has five catches, only for 37 yards, but a couple big ones there to move the sticks on those drives. And so I think we'll see Austin Reed kind of spread it around a little bit. I would imagine you know, you're going to keep using that running game to try to set up the passing game, which is what we've seen. Right, and Q has yet to get going. And you know um, what kind of guy Q is. I mean, Rank Q, uh, Quentin always wants to get involved, and he's the energy guy. He's the guy that gets that offense going. He, they're the high energy guys, Reed and, and Randolph. Uh, so you know he wants to get invo involved. So we'll see how he continues to spread the ball around. 26 yards each for Newton and Johnson on six and eight carries. So not really the big chunk plays, but we saw, if you were watching, you saw you know Anthony Johnson say we're this close, and then he scored a touchdown. But I think he's saying we're this close to breaking a big one. We'll see if that happens. We're ready for kickoff here in the second half. Again, 21 nothing. Argos on top of the Statesman in this Gulf South Conference clash. Austin Williams will handle the kickoff duties here again. We're kind of taking over for Colton Norris there. We'll see. Hard to tell from where we sit with the, the flags are blowing in in center field if we were doing a baseball game. So that may help depending on which way you kick it. Instead, this one's hung up in the air right down to the goal line. Good kick. The return is on out of the end zone, and the UWF special teams all over this one. Again, they'll stop him inside the 20. So on the return was Trey Roberson. The backup running back number 24. And then you had a host of Argos flying down as we take a look at the replay. Special teams, you know, it takes it takes a, a special kind of player. And we see starters doing this, and they've got backups as well. But you've got to run down there full speed, and you got to make it happen. And that was number 39. And Nate Holloway, who we saw make a play uh, earlier as well, jumping in and, and getting hands on somebody. So here you go, first down and 10 from their own 18. So deep in their own end, and this is really – a key drive for Delta State. They need points. They're down 21 nothing. And here you go on first down. This play's going nowhere. In fact, it'll lose a couple. And a flag comes flying in at the end. We'll have to see what that call is. But they've gone to a different running back. That is Keon Wilson, a six foot 205 out of Texas, stepping into the backfield. Yeah, and again, that's a great job by the defense, basically forcing him to the outside and just nowhere to go. We do have a flag on the play. Let's see what the call is. And this may back them up the way it looks. It's hard to tell for sure, but it looks like it may be on Delta State. Yeah, I didn't see anything from up here, but 
Looks like the headline judge. Did. I'm not sure what he can <laughs> call this on. He's taking his time. They, 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 have, they have been uh, deliberate. Holding. Number 62 of the offense. That's costly. Has the distance to the goal. Replay first down. Costly on first down. So you're already starting at your own 18. Yeah, that's going to be a Now big you're one. backing it up inside the 10. Let's yeah, take a look at a the, the stats for Breck Ruddick, number 93, the quarterback. He's been efficient, 10 for 12. I mean, that's 80, 84, 83%, but 65 yards, and he did throw the pick. And he's got a good, strong arm, Jamie, but they may have to rely on him here, and I don't know if that's really who he is. We'll have to see. They're going to run it on first and 20, and that's going to go nowhere. So Roberson didn't get anything on the first one with the hold, doesn't get anything without the hold on the second carry on first down. Yeah, and, I mean, more of the same here, brought down by Matthew Gotell. Yeah. That's 6'3", 290 coming at you, and that's an experienced guy also, and he just breaks that up. I, you know, like like a, like a sharks with blood in the water, you, you kind of get that impression from this UWF defense. They are swarming right now. They, they like that zero on the board, and they want to keep it that way. Here you go on second and 20. Time in the pocket. Oh, big hits at the end. The ball is downfield, and Sherrod Oliver twists around with a chance maybe to come up with a pick there. Ruddick paid for delivering that football. I mean, he's got a strong arm. Clearly, he threw that ball 50, 60 yards in the air. But look at the end of this replay, the pop he takes at the end of this one. Uh, we don't get to see it, but there's, there's the throw. And Oliver with a nice job of coverage, and he got hands on the football, had a chance maybe to make the play. But Ruddick, Ruddick may be a little uh, woozy after that. Yeah, Sherrod Oliver going to be mad at himself. He didn't get that one. Uh, a little underthrown by Ruddick, probably because he took that lick you were mentioning, Will. Yeah, that may have been from DeMarco Artis, too. I couldn't see the Gerard number coming Oliver in. had a chance to pick that ball off. So third and 20 now. Throwing again. Artis is collapsed in the pocket. And that pressure from DeMarco Artis basically forced Ruddick to throw that ball well before he wanted to. So what a, what a statement from this UWF defense to start the second half is they're going to force a punt from inside the 10 by this Delta State team and give their offense the football right back. Yeah, Artis is definitely putting the pressure on him there. I mean, they, they had the running back, uh, the backup running back in the game for Delta State. Uh, Goltz, Ro Roberson? Roberson, yeah. who's in the game right now. Artis just met him with a power rush, and there was no stopping him. He, he basically played the role of a blocking sled on, the, on a practice field. And yeah, got that's blown right exactly back in. right. Bars into punt. Here comes the pressure. Almost getting to that was Evan Mitchell. I mean, he came close to getting fingers, and Demetri Birch will call the fair catch. But that was almost our second block punt in and around the end zone this season. So good kick by Barge. It moves it out across the 50 barely, but the UWF offense will have the opportunity. Really good field position to start this second half, and you know they're licking their chops, looking to put some more points up. Definitely, and that's, I mean, as a head coach, you would want to see nothing more than your offense come out and put another touchdown on the board, especially in the first half. And we'll see Austin Reed's stats in that first half here. I mean, he had, he's been playing. Excellent. He really had a good first half. There you go, 10, 10 of 15, and right where he's been, plus 60 com completion percentage, 150, 448 yards, two touchdowns, and two of those big touchdown throws. So he's really had a nice first half on pace for a 300-yard game. We'll see, though, what the play call is. Anthony Johnson running the football. So, again, the, it looks like the setup has been, Jamie, run that ball effectively on first down and then set yourself up again. He probably picks up five or six. Anthony Johnson, you set up a second and five, and you can do anything offensively. Playbook yeah, is wide open. Exactly, and they give him an inside handoff there again, which he's been successful on a couple runs tonight, and they're going to give him five, but that sets you up to basically open up that playbook on second and short. Here you go, second down and short. They'll go back into the run game in the middle of the line. Another positive gain, and Johnson's going to spin and pull it forward. Looks like he will get the first down and move the chains. And another great push by that O-line. They give Johnson the handoff inside. Nothing special about this run. He's just getting held from, from the big boys up front there. It looks like uh, giving him that extra push is Mike Dilla. And uh, he's going to have over you, enough for that first down. You feel like this offensive line is kind of imposing their will on Delta State at this point. Johnson, eight carries for 31 yards. And that average was down at 1.8 early in the first half. Now you see it creeping up. So... The, the running is picking up efficiency and effectiveness and, and starting to see that UWF is dominating in the trenches. 
Quick out. There's the block out front. Coates has got some room to run. He's going to pick up a couple yards before being forced out of bounds. Love the way you see these guys. Tate Latillo this time blocking for Coates, and it can easily flip the other way. And UWF gives them Delta State a taste of their own medicine here. Just a quick hitter, and we've seen Delta do that early in the ball game. And uh, you see Rodney Coates, just a, a quick wide receiver screen, able to pick up about four on that play. That'll bring a second down and six in the books. And we will see what Pete Shinnick and company dial up here. I think they're enjoying themselves at this point because they've got Delta State guessing. They, they clearly do at this point, not knowing what's coming. And there's the run game again. Johnson into the middle of the line, dancing forward. Not enough to pick up the first down as he probably gets about two. Took a little longer to get through the hole probably than he would have liked. Yeah, not uh, a success. Well, not as much as he's been getting on those on those previous runs, but he does pick up about three on that play. It'll bring up a third and manageable here. Yeah, third and four is the official down and distance. By the way, I just got a message for tonight. 6,088 the attendance for this homecoming game. Uh, UWF leads the Gulf South Conference in attendance. I think we were 12th in the nation last year in D2 football. This is a stadium that for baseball holds about 5,000. So with the outfield bleachers, you got a great crowd here tonight. That looks like there may be a flag thrown. Jamie Smith has been mentioning that you just can't cover Tate Latio. He's too much to handle for some of these DBs, and that's going to be another one thrown in there. Yeah, that was about as blatant as it gets. I mean, Jared over in coverage there was trying to hold Latio, but, I mean, basically just tackled him here. And uh, they that's going to be let called you do that. nine out of ten times. That, that's not one that they're going to let you. That, that doesn't. That'll be the automatic first down. Spot of the foul. Now, that rule has kind of changed uh, more to mirror the NFL rule which I think is a good thing because it used to be just 15 yards regardless, and that could help you on a short throw but hurt you offensively on a deep throw. If, if you know, it, made, it was almost an incentive in some cases to commit the crime if you're the defensive back because you knew it was only going to be 15 yards. Yeah, sometimes that helped the uh, defender back in the day, but now with a new rule, it's, uh, it's adjusted here. Super impressed by this crowd, and they've been rewarded tonight with a heck of a game from the Sargo team. Nowhere really to go for Newton. In fact, he's going to get pushed back. There in the middle of that line, there's Beta King. Haven't really called his name at all tonight. Number 30, again, leading the conference in tackles with 37 coming into the game. Seven and a half for a loss, and that's really, a, Jamie, I think it's the first time we've seen him on a play tonight. Yeah, and I, I think that's maybe the first time we've called his name, like you mentioned, Will, but uh, he does get behind there and drops drops Johnson. Uh, and lose a yard. For a yard there. Nice job, and they really neutralized, and that's Good offenses do that. They will take away your defensive playmakers and either run away from them or commit more to them. And we got a man downfield. Karan Ashley with the catch and the touchdown. Argos again. Austin Reed on fire. And the big kid, Karan Ashley, doing his best KG, comes down with the touchdown. Heck of a throw, heck of a catch. That one's going to be a big one. And that's a great throw by Reed. I think Nuttall was over there covering John, or that's Ron Ashley, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be Richards over there covering Ashley. But I thought that may be been another opportunity for a penalty for pass interference, but Ashley just fights through it, and that's a strong catch for him. Great job of separation right there at the end. And, and you see that both guys using their hands, and a good receiver can create that space right at the end. But to catch that and keep your foot in bounds, not as easy as it looks. They make it happen. Alex Virgilio, this one is blocked. And still gets through. It's that kind of night here at Blue Water Stadium. Argos strike quick in the second half. Defense, offense, everybody working it. They are on top 28-0. You are watching and listening to Argo football here on the UWF Sports Network. <laughs>
What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back here with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium. This crowd is alive and electric here for this UWF homecoming game, the Argos all over Delta State. I believe the, the term, the correct term would be they are mauling Delta State right now. 28-0 after the last touchdown drive. Defense comes out, backs Delta State up in their own end, and then you got Austin Reed capping that one off with a 34-yard touchdown strike to Karan Ashley. So Reed continues his incredible play this season, leading the Gulf South Conference in all passing categories, and, and he will not relinquish that lead, I am sure, tonight. Austin Williams. Set to boot this thing again. This one's going to be down to the five-yard line. Return is set up again. This time breaking through that first wall of blue jerseys and picking up some good yardage and a nice return is Trey Roberson, the running back. Yeah, Roberson's going to give Delta State a nice little field position here to start the drive. Probably the one of the – we do have a flag on the I play. I see a flag right in front of the Delta State bench over there. So is that going to be a late hit on the Argos? Is that where he – it looks like it was kind of behind where he went out of bounds maybe. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see what the call I've been, is. It's been a couple questionable calls tonight. <laughs> but, again, they, they take their time. Personal foul. Legal block below the waist. Gets the returning team. Ball will be penalized from the end of the run. So we saw a blindside block called on UWF on a punt return by Karan Ashley. Now a block below the waist goes the other way. That'll back you up. So there's your there's your first real kind of ray of sunlight if you're <laughs> if you're Delta State. Okay, wait now. They changed the call. Okay, so sorry, we turned it down. We turned the referee down too soon, and it looks like the call has been shifted. So it was a block below the waist on UWF. Uh, I'm not quite. I've this, never seen that this, one before. This, this crew is interesting, to, to say the least. So, scoring drive there, Karan Ashley. That looked like a six-play, 53-yard drive. Took 3:13 off the clock. So again, quick, quick strike from this offense. But Delta State now at the 50. So they get a good return, tack on a penalty. They'll get a short field to work with, but down four touchdowns, 28 nothing in this game. 10:23 to play in the third quarter. Ruddick back to pass has a man in the flats. That's Rico Owens. And finally chased out of bounds by Josh Smiley in front of the Delta State bench. Yeah, and they get Owens out of the backfield here just for another quick hitter. Uh, they do go elect to pass in the first down. And uh, Owens scampers ahead for about a game of seven. So this will be interesting to see if Delta State has something in them. This is a good football team. We talked about it in the pregame. I mean, their only loss is to Grand Valley, who's in the top 25 and as a traditional power, and they went up there and lost that game by four points and had a chance to win it. I think they missed a couple field goals and, or would have won that game. They pick up good yardage here on second down, enough to move the sticks. Yeah, and, and Delta State picks up the first down. They give it to Owens on the inside handoff, and you see him get off a couple missed tackles there. Yeah, moving, and good job by their offensive line. Delta State's offensive line firing off and moving the front a little bit. Another quick out. Good defensive play. Sherrod Oliver coming up and all over Hawkins. Yeah, that's going to be Hawkins. Yeah, one of their go-to receivers for Ruddock, and he does a great job of making an open field tackle. I think as a defensive back, once you've seen that play a couple times, now you, you can anticipate it, and you're starting to close that ground and get all over him quickly. And it may be a matter of time before somebody jumps that route. You do. But you know, on the other hand, you have to, have to be you don't mindful to be, yeah. of the stop and go <laughs> as well. That'll set up a second and seven. Handoff is to Owens. And there's a that how is that not a penalty? But it it doesn't go for much as big Brandon Pennerton jumps in there and is all over that play. But uh, that was a block in the back if ever I've seen one. And there's a replay again. Looks like yellow rent. Yeah, that's I don't know how you that still did a yeah, great job yeah. of, of tripping Owens there on that play. That's that's just hustle by Gail Laurent as he had the big fella leaning on him. Number 73, the right tackle, Nic Nicholas Melsop. Who's, who's a big boy. And that'll put Delta in a long yarded situation again. Backs him up, third and 10 now. At the ball at the 30. Ruddock's got time to throw. 
Had a man kind of over in that area, but either a miscommunication or just a bad throw, hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like he was expecting a comeback route, but his receiver ran an in, uh, deep in. And he's got a, you know, Ruddick has a really good arm. That's a well-thrown football, but yeah, just a miscommunication. So now at the 30, fourth and 10, down four scores. Field goal didn't do much for you, although, you know, it'd be nice to get on the board, I'm sure, but they've got to go for it. And this is a tough down and distance to make this happen. Yeah, definitely a, a, a time for four down territory. We'll see what they go with here. Ruddick takes the snap. He's going to get pressure. DeMarco Artis has got him. Sack Argos. Loss of 10. That's a turnover. Ball goes back to this UWF offense. Heck of a play. And we're starting to see DeMarco Artis come into his own. And Artis does a great job of beating his defender. Speed rush. Beats his guy on the outside and gets the sack on Ruddick. There's a man down on the field, and we are we got a stoppage in play. 28-0 is the score. Argos on top of this one. They'll have the ball when we come back right here on the UWF Sports Network. As we what does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. What's even better than going to a UWF football game? Going with all your friends. Decks are available for groups between 25 and 200 people, all group decks come with a UWF football game ticket, food, and soft drinks. It's great for company outings, group functions, birthday parties, and youth groups. Prices start as low as $25 per person. Call 850-474-2746 for more information or to book your deck today. I turn this thing on. Back with you at Blue Wahoo Stadium, set to get the Argos back on offense. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith on ESPN Pensacola and Your View, Florida. First play of this drive, a running play to Jaden Gardner. Doesn't go for much. In fact, may have lost a yard or two. Tried to stretch this thing out to the right, but getting in there and kind of blowing that up right off the bat from his defensive end position was Zane Samuel, number 37. Yeah, Samuel, one of the guys we haven't called a lot tonight either, does a great job of getting in the backfield and uh, getting to Gardner before he's able to cut up. That, you know, that drive by Delta State, the last one to go for it on fourth and ten, obviously you're desperate down 28 nothing, but it really starts to feel like that desperation notches up several at this point in the game. Austin Reed on second and 13, looking to throw the ball, runs out to his side and finds his man, Tate Latio, another catch for Tate as he continues to torture this Delta State defense. And another great job on the run of an accurate throw from the redshirt freshman, Austin Reed. Yeah, and it's tough. I mean, you give Tate Latio a chance in man, and that is where he excels. Now, the, the problem that comes with Tate, and the only reason you can slow him down is when you go into a type of a zone defense, but Tate um, Latio is just going to eat you up in man defense every day if you give him the chance. I think when you're Delta State and that's the way you play, it's too hard to change midstream. It's not something you've worked on, and they are getting exposed here. So first down now, ball at the 48. They go back to the running game, some good tough running. Uh, between the tackles, picking up some hard yards is Jaden Gardner. And that time, Gardner does get a chance uh, to cut up the middle there and falls forward for a nice gain of about four. And so you're seeing, you've seen three of the four running backs. We haven't seen Shamari Mason yet, but Coach Shinnick doing a nice job of making sure everybody gets carries in the game, gets some good touches, and you never know who's going to be the guy that may break the big one. And, for this running game. And you got Quentin Randolph over in man coverage on the outside on the field here. Gain of three there on first down, so it's second and seven. Reed is going to look to roll to his left, and there it is, the man coverage, but this one just a little too strong for Tate Latio on the outside. As Randolph had run the deep route and pulled everybody to the inside of the field. 
If he puts that on the money, Tate may be running all the way down the sideline. And very well he could have been. You see the night Tate's yeah. having right now. Six catches, 54 yards. So not the big plays, the long of 17. But this is what he can do to you due to a defense is just move the sticks with the catches. We've seen him make acrobatic catches. We've seen him run those sharp routes. So Tate Latio having another kind of Tate Latio night. Reed is going to get chased out of the pocket. He's going to throw this one up. Probably, yeah, that was one. He, Much like the game against Mississippi College, he should not have thrown that ball. And Kevin Grant says, I'll take a tackle right here. <laughs> that is the fourth interception of the season, by the way, for Junior Falk. And Austin Reed, is he's going to be disappointed with that, as will Caleb Nobles and Pete Shinnick. What were we talking about earlier, Jamie? What can you not do as a young quarterback? You can't throw the football if your feet aren't set. And when you're jumping in the air to throw, it's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, always have to have those feet set. We saw him get away with it last week uh, over in the Mississippi College game uh, with that with, with a touchdown to Kenneth Chanel. But um, you have a, l a little bit of a better defensive team this week in Delta State, and they make him pay for it there. I guess you're feeling it at this point. You know, you're up 28 nothing in this game. Maybe that's one. You're on the run, just throw the ball out of bounds. You're already outside the pocket. And just like that, coming back the other way with a deep throw down the field. We said we're going to see this eventually. Breck Ruddick tries to stretch this UWF defense, but the Argos have it covered up. Yeah, that's a great job over there. That's going to be it's going to be number 10 for the Argos. Yeah, it's going to be we, Demaria seen, yeah, Givens. We've seen Demaria in there a little bit more tonight uh, in the defensive backfield. He had some help over the top from the safety, which is always what you want if you're out there on an island. But jumping in there was DeArva Brown as well, kind of coming that direction. But, yeah, all over it. I mean, Givens has it covered up. There's the quick pass again. Defense coming up. Nice hit. We just said DeArva Brown is back there at safety. He comes up and closes this one out quickly. Yeah, and that's going to be him and uh, DeMarie Givens on that play. <laughs> really a combo tackle there. and I mean, yeah, K.J. Breeland with the catch on the short game. So now third and six or seven. Givens does a great job of really shedding off his blocker there. For this Delta State offense. And you love to see this. I'm sure the, the defense, obviously you want to pitch the shutout here. But you're saying, hey, let's pick our quarterback up. He threw the pick. We're going to go out and get the ball back for him. So big play here if you're Delta State. They're going to go to Rico Owens on the carry. Interesting call on third and seven. That doesn't go, doesn't go too far before it's shut down by this UWF defense. Good job on the inside of that line. And it's kind of hard to change your identity. I mean, if you're Delta State, this is what you've been doing all year, and it's been successful for you. So, I mean, they continue to run the ball here, and I think you just have to realize that's who Delta State is. Absolutely. Chandler Ferguson getting in on that play from his linebacker position. Also right at the end there you saw Keon Holder, number six, coming in. So a lot of guys, as we said, playing. I don't know what was going on there, a fire drill, but the last thing you want is Daryl Wilson coming through with nobody touching him if you're the quarterback. And I think you may have a false start here yeah, on Delta. false start on the, on the defense. and These guys have gotten a workout tonight on some of these penalties. And that's going to move him back even further. It, it's tough, I mean, when you're down this far and, you, you know, every, everything is anxious and more important. Delta State, that is their 10th penalty tonight in this ball game already, so you're – uh, they, they had had less yardage. UWF had taken a couple big 15-yarders, but it's the little penalties that have backed them up into now instead of a fourth and two, you're looking at a fourth and seven. It's a, it's a totally different down and distance in, in that you, you may not be able to run the ball here. Ruddick fakes the handoff to Owens. Pressure's coming. This throw is over the head of Hawkins. And the flag, did I see a flag throw? Yeah, in that's In the backfield. Gonna, yep. Is it late hit on the quarterback? We'll have to see what the call is. Although they're running off the field, it looks like a hold. I think they're going to get a hold on DeMarco or the defender that was holding DeMarco Artis. And they'll, they'll wave that off. Holding. Yep. Offense number 62. That penalty is declined. Results of play. First down, West Florida. Another over on downs. 28 0 is our score. The Argonauts all over the statesman here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. You're watching and listening to Argo football right here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. 
Learn more at penair.org slash about us. Back with you, Blue Wahoo Stadium set to go here. Argos back on offense after another fourth down stop and ball over on downs. And they'll go back to the running game on first down. Jervon Newton into the line, falls forward for a gain of two. They'll spot him and bring up a second and eight. So this offense looking to be clicking again. An errant throw from Austin Reed, one he shouldn't have thrown as he was rolling out to his right and just couldn't get his feet set. That's one of those that you'll learn as a redshirt freshman to throw that ball out of bounds, but we'll see if they can get this back on track. Yeah, and that's kind of the beauty of the situation. I mean, in a, in a position like this, he still gets to learn, and he's only a redshirt freshman, and uh, some people still have to realize that. <laughs> Here we go. Second down now and eight. Back to the passing game. Offensive line holds up. There's that man-to-man -man coverage, and he had Karan Ashley just like the touchdown play. Flying down the sideline, open, just overthrows him by about two or three yards. And Austin Reed was clapping his hands together, saying, I, oh, that was it. I had him. I had him right there. Yeah, and that's Ashley taking advantage again. Had about three, two or three uh, steps he, on this guy. If he puts that on the money or even a step in front of him, it's a touchdown. And you're looking at a five-score game, five-touchdown game. So here you go. That'll bring up third down and eight. Foot is still on the gas. Two wide receivers, three now. Tate Latio comes in motion, so two receivers on each side of this set, running back in the backfield. Reed is going to pull this thing up and run. He's got plenty of room. He'll get the first down and then some. Tate Latio with a block out front to keep him clean. Don't know if that was a design running play, but he sure took off quick. Yeah, he realized that Latio was covered up, and uh, I don't think he even went through his second or third progression. He just decided he was going to do it with his legs there. And Reed, we know he can run the ball. Picks up just enough for the first. A lot of green. Nice job by Tate Latio staying shoulder to shoulder with the defensive back and not picking up a penalty. So that'll move the sticks, moves the ball to the 40, no, 30, 34. 34 yard line now, first down inside the Delta State end. Argos looking for more points. Two receivers to the right side. They'll hand off to Newton. Newton has nowhere to go as. Delta State defense runs him back. Nobody on the ground with him. He almost kind of ran into Devin Gibson and may have knocked himself down. Yeah, he ran into a host, really a, a, a dog pile there of Delta State defenders. And the first person to get to him was big number 51 for Delta State. That's going to be Taj Perry, uh, six foot 275. Just, yeah, just, he's still growing, boy. They have to put him on the training table, get him up to three bills right there. And again, another long yardage situation here for UWF. Second and 11. We've seen them have something basically that can be dialed up for just about any situation on this drive. Reed will look to throw again. He's got the single coverage. Birch is going to catch another touchdown. Argos. Dimitri Birch just working these defensive backs. It's his second touchdown of the game. Another 30 plus yarder, 34 this time on the throw and catch. Austin Reed, another one. And another great throw, uh, and that's taking advantage of the man coverage yet again. You see Birch run a fade route here, and man coverage. Defender don't even turn his back around, and Birch takes advantage of him again. And like we saw earlier in the first half, Birch with two touchdowns. 2-13 now left to play in this quarter as we set up for another Alex Virgilio point after try to make it a 35 nothing game snap is good hold is good Dawson Hamlin gets it down that kick is up and it is a five touchdown cushion for this Argo football team wow I mean you know 
There's so many superlatives we can throw out. Look at this. You know, he missed on the throw to Cron Ashley a second ago, not missing with this one. Perfect placement on that back shoulder. And a nice job adjusting to a throw as he kind of was twisting off the defender. Dimitri Burke just having a breakout game, kids. And, I mean, we just come to know another playmaker for this offense. You see Reed giving his O-line some credit there. But that just speaks to the depth that this, this, this offense has. I mean, it's a different guy every week. Uh, and, you know, we haven't even seen the Kevin Grants and the, and the Quentin Randolphs making the plays tonight. It's been other guys. It's Cron Ashley, Dimitri Burke stepping up. We were already looking at a six-deep receiver core. Now you're throwing in two, I mean, eight, nine, ten guys, if you include the tight ends, that can all make plays. And Kenneth Chanel has been quiet tonight. Haven't we haven't heard tonight. much of him. I think the RRTC thought they might have a light night on the push-ups. Yeah. Not happening, boys. Not tonight. You have to get out there and bang, bang those sets out. I love what we saw on the sideline right there. You, you referenced Austin Reed coming over, but I saw Daryl Wilson coming over and, and giving love to the offensive lineman. That's what team is all about, being a teammate. They, they get after each other offensively and defensively at practice, but when the lights are on and you're all wearing blue, it's a different story. I'm sure he is, and I'm sure he's telling them, hey, thank you, because I got a, a considerable amount of rest on that last <laughs> drive. So I appreciate you guys. That scoring drive, five plays, 45 yards, two minutes and 12 seconds off the clock. Fifth touchdown of the game for these Argos. Fourth passing touchdown for Austin Reed. Another deep kick from Austin Williams. This side inside the four, and good coverage again. Nice return, but coming down to chop him down. Chandler Ferguson getting involved, and there's, there's our guy. I've been super impressed tonight with Demaria Gibbons, number 10, flying down there. Yeah, I mean, just a bunch of playmakers. You see you see Ferguson flying down the field and like a bottle rocket, makes a great open field tackle. Yeah. It takes a special kind of guy to play play on kickoff squad. That's your starting middle linebacker too, getting out there and get you know, thirty five nothing football game, flying down and making plays like that. That's that's effort at the highest level. So here you go. Delta State just in a hole, a deep, deep hole, the one that keeps getting deeper every time UWF touches the football. Rico Owens will take the handoff on first down. This defense, there will be no let up. I can guarantee you that from Coach Darian Doolin and company. They want the shutout. They want to continue to lead this conference in scoring defense. And there you see another great tackle there. Uh, it's going to be Trent Archie. Josh Smiley and, and on the Josh bottom Smiley, there. Yeah. Two, two senior guys, two veterans getting involved. Getting involved. Great defense, like you said, well, they're not going to – they're not going to – let up here. They want that shutout. I want to make this happen. Here we go. Ruddick back in the shotgun. Single receiver out to each side. Owens is in the backfield with him. They got to throw the football, and they will. And closing in on it, that's what we've been waiting to see. This time he's firing it over there, looking for number 16. That is Jalen Browder. And closing that space, look at this. Just exploding as Marcus Clayton threw the football. That is textbook tackling in the open field. Yeah, and that's a great job by Marcus Clayton. Great eyes by him to see. Basically, the, the pass and the receiver coming in at the same time. Forces the incompletion. Third and six down in distance now. Single wide outs each side again. Ruddick is looking to throw again. He pump fakes a couple times, held the ball way too long, and that's going to collapse on him. The house was on fire, and all the exits closed. I think I saw Ty Cox get in there. Yeah, that's going to be Ty Cox. And as a quarterback, Ruddick, you just got to know your timer has to go off eventually to get rid of it or either give your guy a shot. At coming down with it, and Ty Cox takes advantage of it. That's actually T.J. Kelly, too. Cox and Kelly, but big T.J. on the bottom of that pile. They like that. You collapse the pocket from the middle. That's going to force a punt. No going for it here deep in your own end. Ball at the 27. Bars will come on to kick. Argo's looking to set up a return. Cron Ashley is back for this one. It's a wobbly end-over-end kick. He'll call the fair catch and make it at about his 40-yard line. So the Argos will go back on offense. I wonder at some point, do we do we start? I, I see Austin Reed out there. Of course, Austin Reed's going to probably try to sneak on the field regardless of where how out of hand this game gets because he wants to keep playing. But you do start to wonder at some point, do you put in a J.C. Robles and, and get him some more game experience because you're seeing this on the other side of the football, not the starting quarterback, Patrick Chagog, as we mentioned uh, in the pregame, broke his collarbone for Delta State. So they've gone with Breck Ruddick, who used to be a starter and lost his job because of injury. At some point, you wonder, although we still have 46 seconds left here in the third quarter, and I'm sure Austin Reed wants more. Nice handoff and dancing around the outside and finally picking up some positive yardage before being hogtied is Shamari Mason. So finally, we've seen the fourth running back get into the game. It's Mason time. 
It is Mason time, and this is the this is probably the the most the, the guy that has all that. the moves. Making a couple defenders miss, does what he can. Not a lot of running room to the outside, but what he can do out in space is just incredible. He's got a little Barry Sanders in him. 5'6", 170, freshman out of Fort Myers down there. But you saw that even with somebody on his leg, he's able to dance out of that and pick up some, some positive yardage. That will run us down towards the end of the quarter here. 35 nothing. All these exciting touchdown calls. I'm starting to lose my voice here. Argos lead this thing. That, that'll end the third quarter. We'll get you ready for the fourth. Argo's all over in this one here. You're watching and listening to Argo Football on the UWF Sports Network. In an emergency, especially a life-threatening emergency such as a stroke or heart condition, every second matters. <laughs> What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their regular success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. Bringing you back here to Blue Wahoo Stadium, the crowd, just a lively rendition of Sweet Caroline from the legendary Neil Diamond. And everybody's getting into it. Easy to do when you're having this kind of football game. Austin Reed continues what we've been doing. Tate Latio picking up a big chunk of yardage on the second down and eight play. Austin Reed, here's that composure again. Look at him all day. Just stand there, slide forward in the pocket, make a nice little nifty John Elway style throw. And Latio gets those blocks downfield, picks up a big chunk. Everything working for these Argos tonight. Yeah, Reed just buying time in the pocket, giving this guy uh, just time to play catch with him. And uh, he finds Tate streaking across, and that's a big gain. Fourth quarter starts just the way the other three have kind of gone. Domination from this UWF football team. 35-0 the score. That's throw almost picked off over there. Nice job getting to that on the outside. RJ is RJ Jarrett. Jarrett? Yeah, and that's one of those playing with fire a little bit. But when you're, you know, it's a heat check in basketball, right? I keep James Harden. I'm making all these threes. I'm just going to shoot one from the locker room. So you start thinking, I'm going to throw everything in this window. Yeah, don't forget <laughs> Steph Curry in there. <laughs> exactly. Shoot but that's that's court. one Reed is probably like, okay, oops, it didn't cost me too much. Yeah, exactly. He, he has thrown the one pick tonight, a, a throw rolling out that he probably shouldn't have chunked as he was getting chased out of the pocket, just couldn't get his feet set and get anything on it. That brings up second and 10. They'll go to Mason and Shamari dancing through the line. Shamari, Mason cutting it loose. Touchdown, Shamari into the end zone. Argos making it happen, but is there a flag? Yep, you see it. There's some laundry on the field, and Mason said, I just, I just had the run of my season, my first make it and break it collegiate touchdown and there's a flag this may be a block down field at the end and it's going to be on delta state quentin randolph's clapping it up here oh so it is jamari mason with the touchdown 
If it is, that is the call. Let's see. We'll have to confirm it. The referee is. It looks like it. Quentin Randolph celebrating. Everybody looks like they want this to be a Yeah, Judge Joe Wintrick. Didn't hear what the referee Couldn't had to hear, say. Couldn't hear, but it definitely is on Delta State because we're lining up for a PAT. After the play, personal foul, hands the 21 defense. The touchdown is good. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. So Shamari Mason runs in, is celebrating. He turns around and sees a flag that literally was thrown right as he turned and thinks, did somebody, did somebody block at the end of this play? In the words of the legendary and late Keith Jackson, oh, that little yellow hanky. But How about that? Instead, Shamari Mason makes it happen with the touchdown run. And the PAT is up and good. Argos continue to pour it on. Nope, nope. Did he miss it? And the bottle rocket out of the backfield, Shamari Mason. I mean, look at this guy. Just makes defenders miss one. And you have another defender there, too. And, I mean, just uses his speed, another there, three. Oh, I see it there. Now, it actually was before the play ended. Uh, one of the defenders got cue by the face mask and pulled it. We were, I was just saying, he's got a little Barry Sanders in him. That was a Barry Sanders-style run. The little guy making it happen. More push-ups for the ROTC. And we have such a bad angle down here on the field goals uh, at the far end. I couldn't see. It, it was missed at PAT, which we haven't had one of those in a while. But Alex Virgilio... Cannot convert. So 41 nothing is the score now. 14.08 left to play <laughs> in this football game. You may not be done yet I to the crew right there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a rest just yeah, yet. I would, the way this I, offense I would go get an, an energy drink, maybe a, a monster too. But how about this offense tonight? I mean, that first quarter from where, to where they are now, I mean, it's basically just clicked for them. I mean, 262 yards through the air. And, I mean, Incredible. the rushing yards just continue to get – they're one tick under 100 yards right now. But, I mean, everything's working for them at this point. That was a heck of a run. And just to, to make people miss, and we've seen Mason be close a couple times as he's gotten in second half of some games. I mean, what what a embarrassment of riches to have as a coaching staff. We were talking about the receiving core, Jamie, and all the guys. We've seen Birch and Cron Ashley tonight – with touchdown grabs, adding to the Randolphs and the Grants and the Latios and Coates and all these guys. And now you're talking about four running backs, because we've seen them all tonight, who are all capable of doing some special things. You definitely, you definitely sleep good at night if you're Coach Sinek knowing what you have on your team. Austin Williams, after the penalty, has a chance to boot this thing, and he probably could have put it out of the end zone. Instead, he, he kicks it down. That'll be a fair catch, so that'll bring the ball out. Delta State has no answers for what's going on, what is being done to them tonight. And, and we thought, I mean, J Jamie, there's going to be people around the conference that are going to look at this score, and they're going to be stunned, I think, a little bit. You know, not, not that UWF wins this game at home, but the fashion in which they are dominating and, and where this final score may end up. This is a team that came in 3-1, and one, you know, 2-0 in conference play, and – Who's handled the major majority of the teams that they've played? Only lost to a top 25 team in Grand Valley State, and UWF is having their way with them tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm for sure. I, I am surprised. I, you can count me as one of those people. I know we were expecting a closer game. It's just been, you know, this kind of thing all night. And there's another opportunity for defensive backs to fly around. We're seeing some other guys check into the game now. We're gonna, we're, they're going to test our depth chart again, clearly, tonight. Yeah, you see Nate Holloway in the game there on the tackle for UWF or in that area. But you see a couple of guys checking in here, and uh, UWF will rotate some of those guys uh, that don't normally get playing time here. Yeah, I think you'll see, you know, we may see that on offense, too. We're clearly seeing it on defense. And then closing off, there's Nate Holloway again. Holloway can't bring him to the ground. And he's going to wish he had that one back as he tried to go up high. Again, kids at home. Hit, slide down, take the legs away, right, Jamie? That's what you got to do, teach that. You can't Don't throw Don't stay him. up high. Exactly, but great job by Holloway yeah. up until the tackle. I mean, he pursues oh, the yeah, ball yeah. greatly and tries to slam him down. But As, as a coach would, would once say to me, this isn't the WWF, son. You're not trying to hip toss somebody. <laughs> exactly. Get him to the ground. Heck of a play. To end that last drive is now Delta State. Ruddick's going to keep it and run around. To the left side, probably gets enough for the first down. But 
I mean, the, you want to talk about the air outside of, you know, let out of a balloon for Delta State. They, they travel well. They brought a lot of fans tonight, many of them sitting across in the outfield bleachers. I've already seen that area clear out there. You know, that, that ride back to Cleveland is a long ride when you've taken a whooping like this. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully they, uh, they stay another night and don't have to make that trip back uh, all, in <laughs> one to, all in one sitting. But, it's, um, it's, it's, it's disappointment at the highest levels. Back to the run again. Ruddick will keep again, go over towards his sideline one more time. And not that there's much else you can do at this point, but you feel like there's not a whole lot of options in the passing game to be able to, to make a big play happen. They've tried it down the field. They've had no luck. Uh, that was a 31-yard touchdown run by Shamari Mason. So we've kind of been waiting for this running game to break out and have the big play. They, they do that on that last drive. So we've seen all manner of scoring offensively. Not, not quite Lynchburg levels yet where we had defensive pick sixes and punt blocks for touchdowns, but similar dominance, and you're talking about a very different kind of opponent. Ruddick fakes one way, goes back the other way. Nice job by DeArva Brown of being on that side and taking out uh, the, after the completion to, to Robbie Evans over there. Yeah, great job by Brown. Able to be disciplined enough to recognize that screen, what was being set up, and again, uh, this team has done a great job with open field tackling all tonight. And that'll bring up a third and long situation for this or Delta State offense. That's how you do it. You get down on those legs and force the man either to the ground or out of bounds. So third down and seven out near midfield now. Delta State has been deep in UWF territory and turned the ball over on downs early in this game. Could have been a very different game if they could get some points on the board at that point. Quick out to the side and good blocking over there. Probably enough to pick up the first down. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go ahead and move the chains here. Just enough for a first down. They get one of their playmakers again on the outside. That's going to be one of their receivers Is that on a that receiver play. That, he's a big fella. Yeah, number 83, uh, Tony Daggett, 5'8", 165. First time we've seen him. On a swing pass out to the outside where blockers in front, and uh, that's enough for the first down. He came in with five catches on the season. That's his first one here tonight. So first down now, ball at the UWF 41, Delta State. On the move here in a 41-0 ball game. We're just under 11 minutes to play left in this one. Quick out to Hawkins again. He kind of cuts it upfield before finally being taken down from behind by Durante Jordan. Yeah, Jordan a little slow to get up there. But uh, just another, that's, I mean. That's Sherrod getting up slow, yeah. He's going to come off the field. You bring in some other guys. Marcus Clayton will come back on. Just more of what we've seen. I mean, Delta State with the quick the quick route there. That's been their only effective play tonight, Jamie, has been that quick out to, to really to Hawkins. And they haven't been able to run the ball against this UWF defense. That's been their one bread and butter kind of go-to. So Ruddick back in the gun again. He'll go with the inside handoff. It's Evans in it running back. Now he's going to pick up the fall forward for a couple. He may get the first down yardage. We'll see if they move the chains. And, and, and Rudd accuses to hand it off as he had Chandler Ferguson, Coach Doolin, dialing up pressure still late in this ball game. You see Chandler Ferguson coming out in the blitz on the outside there. And uh, Delta State picks up the first down. So Delta State moving the football. And you know we, we've been touching on it. This is You want to keep a clean sheet. Ruddick with room to run. He may be headed towards the end zone. They finally get him down. Ball comes out. Delta State's going to recover this thing about the one-yard line, and that ball was sitting on the ground with a chance for some Argos to fall on it. Instead, after a run by Ruddick where he tried to stretch at the end, it's wacky. Football is like that sometimes. Delta State ends up knocking on the door of the end zone. So Ruddick with room. He tries. He gets tripped up from behind by Clayton. I'm not sure that that fumble wasn't caused by the ground either way, but there are no replays here, so this ball will be down. Actually, they're going to say he was down. Yeah, they're going to the say he so was the down. Ball will be the ball will be at the six yard line. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good call by the officials there. Yeah, no doubt about that one. That'll set up Delta State. And you got to think they're, I don't know, if you could hold them here, they may not try a field goal. They may try to take all four downs. So there may be an opportunity to keep them off the board. Good, good second effort by Robbie Evans. So they, Delta State has gone a little bit deeper into their running back compliment as well. Evans kind of dancing through and he gets forward after looking like there was nothing there. He'll pick up two or three. Yeah, Robbie Evans, the shorter of these running backs at 5'8", uh, but it's still stout. 190. He's able to put in the second effort and uh, gain, about, gain about four on that play. So that'll be second goal from the three. Whistles blow before that play gets underway. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have a false start well, here. It's been that kind of night if you're Delta State. Not much going your way. Everything kind of going wrong. Yards have been tough to come by. 
false start. Offense number 57. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. Wow. You know, this is the kind of game, Jamie, where if you're, you're Coach Cooley, I mean, you just want this, you want to get this out of here. Yeah, you're ready to get the buses cranked up and, you know, get back to the chalkboard, so to speak. But, I mean, it's, it's been that kind of night for Delta State. I mean, when they've had success, they've had penalties that hurt them or, uh, or, or, or something else, and they haven't been able to get the, the MO back on their side. Here you go. Second down. Ruddick hands it off. And you see a bunch of guys, Gail Laurent getting up after that one. Helmet coming off again on some offensive linemen. Nice job of really getting into this play in a hurry, bouncing it to the outside. And there's Laurent getting it done. Givens flying in, Oliver around as well. So good action over there. And if you're the defense, how well do you feel? I mean, you can basically tell uh, Andre Duncan. I mean, basically, we, we need you, but uh, take your time, big fellow, because this defense is showing, showing out tonight. They're all over it. Let's see here, Ruddock on third down, third and eight, quick out. That defense has got that snuffed out, and they'll bring him down. Really nothing on that play, so that'll bring up a fourth and goal from around the eight-yard line. And they will send the kicking unit onto the field, try to get try some to points, get some on, the points board. on the board. Who's going to block this thing? Who's going to come in and keep that goose egg up there? Yeah, you know they're thinking about that right now, but what a job by this defense to hold them. Uh, uh, once again, uh, even to a field goal try here. They're playing great tonight. Sneaking up on eight minutes now as the clock continues to run. 41-0 the score here from Blue Wahoo Stadium. It is down. Crabtree gets this thing up, and it is good. So Delta State finally breaks the seal, puts three points on the board. That makes it 41-3 to with 7.53 here to play in this ball game for Blue Wahoo Stadium. You're watching and listening to football on the UWF Sports Network. Change doesn't happen by luck or chance. It doesn't quit, it doesn't give up. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. Who will you connect with? What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Look at that. Five glorious inches of Whataburger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese and fresh cut veggies. But what if it's too much fresh beef? Stacked too high with too much melted cheese and too many fresh cut veggies. Well, we have a four inch burger like a lot of other places. We just call it a junior. Good thing there's a burger made just for you. Good thing there's Whataburger. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile, and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Dietary.com. Back here with you from Blue Wahoo Stadium, Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith, a 41-3 lead for the UWF Argos on homecoming night 2019 over the Delta State Statesman. Delta State finally putting some points on the board, capped off uh, their drive, their best drive of the night, or you know, second best. They were down in that similar situation in the first half, came up short. This time they get the field goal, don't go for it on fourth down. Taylor Crabtree booting one through from short range, and that's where we stand at this point. A missed PAT on the last touchdown by UWF, keeps it a 41-3 game. So here you go, short kick, return is on, and dancing through is Javon Newton. He'll set up his team with some decent field position, it looks like about the 34-yard line. Jamie, it's one of those things where we were just speculating, who are we gonna see come out at quarterback here to start this next drive? And it looks like it will be J.C. Robles, number 10, coming off the bench, leading the offense out. And it's great to see him come in and get some playing time here. And um, you never know uh, as the season continues to, as we continue to get into the later, latter portion of the season, um, you, you may need him. And it's good to see him in, come in and get some reps here. Yeah, you're always, you know, one play away from having the next guy come up. And we've seen some guys already Gail Laurent for Andre Duncombe, you know, come in and really 
pick up the slack. Mason back at it, what he was doing last time. His last touch was a 31-yard touchdown run. He's going to dance through the line and pick up some good yardage on first down. Taking a look at the scoreboard, the other, only other GSC team in action right now. It's a whale of a game down in Melbourne, Florida. 29-26 Florida Tech on top of Fort Valley State right now. So that's a good football game. We'll see, obviously, in the Coastal Classic in a couple weeks, we'll see Florida Tech on the road. That'll be a big game in conference play. The rest of the conference scores, there have been some surprises today as it brings up a, a first and 10 and first down rush for Shamari Mason. But we'll we'll kind of check in on some of the other GSC scores here. Mason will go back to it again off the handoff from Robles. And he's got room, and he's up the middle, and he's got this thing broken. Can anybody get him from behind? The answer is no. Shamari Mason, touchdown Argos. <laughs> and once you give him running room, and, I mean, it's just a foot race after that. Shamari Mason, probably one of the faster, probably one of the fastest backs in that stable. And you can see here, once he gets past that first wave, he makes a guy miss here. And wow. No, no touching him. 57 yards on this one to the house, diving for the ankles. And then the best chance to bring him down was his own man. But obviously, you're not going to get a tackle out of Anthony Manning, number 16. So Mason is having a breakout moment, too. We've seen the kids tonight. Dimitri Birch, Karan Ashley, Shamari Mason. This time the point after is good. All three having big nights. And that's got to be exciting. We'll take another break here as their ROTC gets ready to do some more push-ups right here on the UWF Sports Network. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Two plays, 67 yards on that last scoring drive. Shamari Mason for 57 yards out. That whole drive, Jamie, was all Shamari Mason. Will Kennedy, Jamie Smith with you. You're watching UWF football right here from Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida on Your View, Florida, and listening on ESPN Pensacola, 1330 AM, 99.1 FM, WEBY, Milton, Pensacola. The celebrations throughout the stadium all the way around. 48 to 3 as we sit here right now, Jamie, with 6.56, just a little under seven minutes to play in this football game. Not at all what we expected. Not at all. Uh, coming into the ball game, I mean, we both expected uh, a closer ball game than this, especially with the kind of team and the kind of history that Delta State has. But credit to this UWF team and the game planning and the execution today, it's all come down to that. And, I mean, Wow, uh, I, that's, that's the only word I can think of right now to explain it. Just for some perspective here, some context, Delta State coming off a win over North Greenville 36-9 to last week where they broke it up in the third quarter of that game. North Greenville beats West Alabama earlier this afternoon, ranked number 25 in the country, 29-28, so an upset there in Livingston. West Georgia beat Shorter 44-34, so more misery for the Hawks, although they played them well tonight. And Valdosta, who we'll see in a couple weeks, uh, November 9th, about a month and some change coming up. Valdosta beats Mississippi College 42-17. to So the way it looks like it's going to play out unless uh, miracles happen 
right here is that it's going to only be these Argos fumble on the kick, and we'll see who fell on that one. It may be that Delta State comes up with it on a nice pooch kick. That almost played out the way you drew it up. Nice to practice that kind of thing. But probably Valdosta State and UWF, the only two unbeatens left in conference, both at 3-0. and This is shaping up to be an interesting second half of the season. Yeah, and both of those teams, I mean, both of the teams you mentioned there, Valdosta and UWF, I mean, at this point, you, I mean, you're still in control of your own destiny in the conference. And uh, it looks like that'll be the way it shakes out here as we go deeper into the season. You know, we're five weeks in now, completing the fifth game, and, and as Delta State gets set up on offense, it's Ruddock again. They will leave the senior in at quarterback, looking to move the football again. Robbie Evans in the middle of the line, not much running room there. Is a swarm of Argos. Brandon Pennerton, we've called his name a couple times here this evening, and also getting in there is Kendrick Bradley, who we haven't seen much of tonight at number 19 flying in. Yeah, and Delta State staying true to that running game. Just not able to do anything there. <laughs> Just a host of Argos meeting him in the hole. The, Jamie, this feels like this is nowhere near the team we saw at Carson Newman in week one of the season. This seems like a, a completely different program. And it is. I mean, and that was week one. And as we get another running play from Pennerton. And, Evans, and Evans Ferguson makes some pay there. Wow. Evans just, yeah, that's not good. You're, <laughs> but, I mean, it, you, it, it takes some time. Teams spend all that time in fall camp. And, I mean, they're still meshing as the season comes along. And um, this is a completely different offense, defense, special teams, uh, just an all-around better team than that week one over in um, Tennessee. Yeah, Coach Shinnick was telling us at halftime of the shorter game, they, they, they were tied 14-14 with the shorter team that at that point had lost 41 straight games. And he told them in the locker room, you know, I don't think that's the best you can be. I don't think that's who you are. And if it is who you are, we're in trouble. It clearly was not who this team is in completion there on a long third and seven. So, the, you know, they, they have reached that expectation level that I think was kind of high to come into the season with all the talent on the field. You're starting to see that play out now. Exactly. And you see a lot of guys still learning. Um, and we spoke about that, especially with Austin Reed, uh, just to highlight the quarterback position with the pick tonight that he threw probably shouldn't have thrown that ball, and he, and he knows that, but he's still learning as the season continues to go on. And, and if he can learn that early in the season, uh, rather than making those decisions when the playoffs come around and uh, later in the season, then that, that's going to be a good thing. Barge on to punt again. Another fair catch called by Karan Ashley. We will take another break. Coming up here with the two teams, 48-3 to is the score with 527 left to play here from Blue Wahoo Stadium on the UWF Sports Network. Last practice, guys. You got me flying hard, sweet baby. You got me flying hard for you. It's you. I felt this way before. You know it's you. It's you. You got me more and more. Oh, you got me flying hard. Here at CPC, you're not just a customer, you're part of the family. We operate seven offices throughout the Florida Gulf Coast and Alabama regions with nearly 100 employees to best serve you, the customer. So thank you to all of the thousands of businesses who have helped to make us a leader in the office technology industry for more than 45 years. We will continue to provide a level of service that can't be copied and look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our communities, cities, and country. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Back with, you from, back with you here from Blue Wahoo Stadium in Pensacola, Florida. Will Kennedy and Jamie Smith in a 45-point lead. 48-3 is your score. 527 left to play in this ballgame. UWF all over. J.C. Robles in at quarterback on this second possession for him. And 
We saw Shamari Mason do it last time. How about Jaden Gardner? Nice little cutback move. Is going to pick up some good yardage on first down. This running game after a slow start, Jamie, has really taken off as you look at the run on replay. Up to, before that carry, 166 yards, almost six yards a carry after a really slow start has been dynamic. Argos have thrown for 262 and a bunch of touchdowns, five touchdowns. No, are we up to four or five? I, I've lost track. I'll have to look at the individual stats here in a second. But that offense, you know, closing in now on, on 500 yards of total offense. And, I mean, that's where they like to hover around. And uh, Coach Shinnick has got that offense rolling right now. Go at it again. This time it's, it's Gardner again up near the first down. We'll have to see if they give him the spot that gets him there. Austin Reed, the book is closed on him. 15 of 24, so 62.5%, 262 yards, four touchdowns, a couple of them big hitters, including a 47-yarder to Karan Ashley. Probably done seeing Tate Lateo, Lateo tonight as he had seven catches for 79 yards and then Coates with a touchdown catch. He had three for 68. Birch with two touchdowns. Both, both of his receptions tonight, touchdowns. Karan Ashley, a couple catches, including a huge touchdown. So it's been that kind of night. Shamari Mason, by the way, <laughs> this is a line I like. Four carries, 100 yards. An average of 25 per pop, including a 57-yard touchdown run. So Mason with two touchdowns and 100 yards tonight as he comes back in the game. Your fourth running back. Yeah, just popped a hundred yard night. Yeah, and that'll make you feel good, um, especially that'll that'll get you some playing time. Uh, you know, when you come in and have four carries for a hundred yards, that's that's a stat sheet stuffer there. Super competitive with this offense, just you know to get on the field and and what you love to see is as these guys get on the field, they are making the most of every opportunity. That'll bring up a first down. Mason back in the game, spelling Gardner. Robles takes the snap, inside handoff to Mason. He gets wrapped up pretty quickly in there. I know, and obviously we've seen him run in between the tackles inside the line, but you got you have a feeling, Jamie, if you can get a Shamari Mason out into space on the outside, he's going to make it miserable for def defenses. And he is. I mean, he's one of those quick twitch kind of guys, um, and he is great out in space. We've seen that on the last run, and when he make, made a couple defenders just look silly there. But... Um, and I'm sure they have a couple plays that, that have Shamari Mason out in space and give him a chance to create um, like you've seen last drive, but that's just a great weapon to have on the offensive side of the ball. Two yards on the first down carry. That'll bring up a second and eight. We'll try to set some of these uh, backup linemen that are in there for you now. Robles is going to throw, and he puts the ball on the money, but unable to come up with the catch is Willie Baker, sophomore redshirt wide receiver out of Lakeland, Florida. And you hate that for J.C. because that ball is right where it needs to be, absolutely, between yeah. the numbers. Yeah, that's a great throw by, by Robles on the RPO there. Chooses to go with the pass and puts the ball right there where Baker can catch it. Uh, I'm sure Baker knows he needs to come down with that ball, but just another great throw there by Robles. Seeing Marshall Elam at left tackle, big number 79. You've got Riley Matheny in at left guard. Sorry, left tackle, left guard in there. We'll try to get the rest of the offensive line set for you. Mason. Gets hit hard. There's Veda King. Second time we've called his name tonight as he jumps through there. Ta another tackle for loss to add to his resume. Yeah, and we haven't called his name a lot tonight. I believe that may be his third tackle tonight. But, I mean, he came in, I believe, if you correct me if I'm wrong, as one of the GSC. He the was the tacklers. leading tackler, and I think he was leading in tackles for loss, too, as well. So that drive doesn't go anywhere a little bit. You know, you start putting in third-team offensive linemen and receivers, and it just you know, got a little squirrely, although it – Nice throw by J.C. Robles, and you see the talent this guy has. This is a guy we've talked about in an earlier broadcast, number 10, the, the backup quarterback. Robles was playing at Colorado State, ha started a handful of games for the Rams along the way, and ended up transferring here as a grad transfer, had the starting job. Come, he was here for spring, comes out of the fall camp and is the starter. And the first two or three possessions that Carson Newman and the opener on the road, the, the team doesn't go anywhere. had nothing to do with J.C. Robles. Coach Shinnick put in Austin Reed to try to light a fire. It worked, you know, for the most part. They were able to move the ball a little bit. Couldn't come up with the win in the game, but kind of rode the hot hand from there. And obviously, you can't argue with anything Austin Reed has done. He is leading the GSC in all the passing categories. So you feel bad for a guy like J.C. Robles is just not getting his opportunity. But he may, before all is said and done, have a role to play. Yeah, and and still early uh, in the season. And it could be, we could be very early in the season, depending on how this – 
the end of it plays out. And um, but I think you see a team that's well, ca well, more than capable of reaching the playoffs in EWF. So uh, still a lot to be said for Robles in this playing time here. Dawson Hamill will get on another chance to punt. He had a game against Lynchburg a couple weeks ago. Didn't punt at all last week. Penned everybody down inside the 20. Has really been kind of a weapon for this UWF team. And tonight we've seen him when he has been called on. Have a couple good kicks. He'll punt this thing with under two minutes left to play in the football game. He gets a little bit of a wobble on this one. Evans is going to fair catch that thing. Set his offense up again. 48-3. to 45-point spread in this one. About a minute and a half left to play. And... Jamie, this, this is going to be interesting because coming off this game, obviously, you're feeling great as a coaching staff. you got a couple things. You mentioned the Austin Reed interception. There's a couple things to look at, and obviously every game you take away. The parties are going to be off the chain tonight for homecoming as people hit downtown Pensacola and on campus as well. They need a tradition where they throw – I don't want to encourage this, but, you know, toilet paper a tree, something like that, like <laughs> they do at Tumor's, Tumor's Corner. Maybe the cannon gets it tonight. But you get a bye week next week, and – you got momentum going, and then you get into this back half of the schedule, which you've got some, some tough opponents coming up as they'll run it on first down. Delta State may just kind of run the clock out, but you know, kind of getting a look at the rest of the schedule. You know you've got some tough games. Obviously, you've got Delta State. I mean, uh, Valdosta State sitting there. But all of a sudden now, our next game is October 19th, not next Saturday, the one after. You're up on the road in Carrollton, Georgia, at West Georgia. They're not the team, as, as Denny Green, the late Denny Green would say, they are who we thought they are. In this case, they're not who we thought they are. Yeah, no, and, and that's been the biggest surprise, I think, here in the GSC Conference as the play of West Georgia, who was uh, at a, a top five team nationally l last year. Yeah. And that big, the, the biggest drop-off uh, has probably been from them in the conference. But, um, I mean, you, you have a team with a bye week next week in, UW, in, in UWF, and you basically get two weeks to prepare for that, that West Georgia team. So You'll roll up to Carrollton with a lot of that's confidence. It's going to be a good game. you got a tough game. we got a tough game on the road. you got back-to-backs on the road at Florida Tech, Coastal Classic, and then Florida Tech playing well. We'll get you their final score here in a second. Um, it looks like they're losing right now, though, 33-29 to to Fort Valley. Another running play into the middle of the line as the clock is winding down. So you got two games on the road, both obviously winnable, although both good football teams, but not quite what we thought. The next home game is November 2nd on a Saturday right here with the North Greenville team coming in that Delta State beat. And then it's Valdosta. So you, you've got, you know, you, you're in position. If you're playing this brand of football the way you're playing right now, you could easily be sitting. You're four and one after tonight. You, you could easily be sitting at seven and one when you take on Valdosta. Definitely. And I mentioned it earlier, this team controls their own destiny. And uh, we all know that Austin is probably the heavyweight in the conference right now coming off a national championship. And um, if you're sitting 7-1 uh, and one possibly when you go up to Valdosta and play, play that team, then you have a pretty good shot to, to make the playoffs. We apologize to the radio audience because you can't see what <laughs> we're on TV. We're simulcasting at the same time. Just, just know that basically Delta State – it keeps running the football and, and winding the clock down. And, and this is – I never expected I, – I knew with the Lynchburg game we were going to have some moments in the second half where we were just kind of got to, to walk around, if, if you will, a little bit and talk about some other stuff and, and kind of preview what's to come. I never thought that would be the case against Delta State here on homecoming tonight. But you got a 45-point lead, 48-3 football game with 10 seconds left to play. So we got a chance to kind of break down some of this stuff and – it's, it's going to be a heck of a second half. I think this team, we've finally we said, when were they going to play the complete football game? We have seen that tonight. Barge is going to punt. This is a good kick. Angle towards the sideline. It'll go out of bounds. So with three seconds left, Argos will have a chance to put on the victory formation, probably kneel this thing out and take it to the house on homecoming. What a football game. We'll hear from Coach Pete Shinnick after the game is over. Uh, Brian Henry will catch him on the field. And then, of course, for the radio side of things, stick with us for the UWF football postgame show where we will kind of break down this one, continue to talk about what is ahead, and we'll run down that GSC scoreboard for you one more time. But, man, so much to talk about out of this game, and you love to go into a bye week with this kind of feeling and this kind of emotion and, and the possibilities of what you are and what you can be. Yeah, it's going to be great, and this is going to be a momentum builder um, as UWF gets into – uh, the latter part of the schedule with the heavyweights. Robles takes the knee, and that'll seal the deal. 48-3. to 
Let me say that again. 48 to 3, the final score. The Argos win by 45 on homecoming against Delta State. Keep in mind, folks, this is the fourth year of this program, the fourth homecoming game here at Blue Wahoo Stadium. And you are taking on a team that was receiving votes for the top 25, was 3 and 1 coming in, 2 and 0 in conference play. And if there's a woodshed down here, Delta State just got taken behind it and, and got a whooping. I think Coach Shinnick and company asked Delta State to go cut their own switch, Jamie. Yeah, yeah that's that, – I mean, that's a whooping if you ever seen one. But that just – I mean, this, this team out, came out and played great tonight. And, uh, I mean, credit to the uh, the Argos. I mean, they played well. And there's the stats some, are there. Some final stats. Yeah, you, you get to uh, – not quite to 500 yards of offense, but it's, it's in the neighborhood. And, wow – the rushing tonight against a team that was giving up 75 yards a game, you run for 178, and Shamari Mason goes for 100. So the one turnover doesn't hurt you. The defense almost throws a shutout but continues to be the best scoring defense in the conference. What a dominant performance. And look at the numbers defensively. 105 yards passing. They do give up 113 rushing, but a lot of that is late and meaningless yards. They really lock down this Delta State football team. So the Argos will improve now to 4-1 and one on the season. They're only lost the opener on the road at Carson Newman. And they will set up a second half of the season after a bye week in which they will be looking to position themselves for the playoffs and avenge. This is the second win over Delta State now. Go after the one team they haven't beaten in conference play in Valdosta State. Lots of football to play before then, but obviously – it's hard not to be excited about what we were seeing from this squad, Jamie. It is. I mean, and you, and I think we get excited is because we see the potential that this team has and what they can accomplish when they put it together every week. And we've seen both sides, Will, um, with us traveling to the home and away games. Uh, we've seen, if you will, the, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde <laughs> of this team. But when they are on and when they're connected and playing as a group, this is a tough team, and um, they're, they're, they're one of the tougher teams in the GSC in the fourth year, and uh, I would say more one of the, the, the tough, one of the tougher teams in the country. Coach Pete Chenick making his way to Brian Henry right now below us. Let's go down to the field and hear from a very happy Coach Pete Chenick. Well, Coach, you, um, you, you preach offense, but your defense put up one of the most impressive performances probably in the country tonight, holding a team to three points. That's their lowest output since 2002. A Delta State program. What do you have to say about your performance tonight? No, our defense was flying around. Our defensive staff just put together a great game plan. We really felt like we were built for this type of game. Uh, and so, so excited to see our guys just play 60 minutes of great football. You won the battle of the line in the trenches, the line of scrimmage, and you were throwing the ball all over the field. Is that pretty much what your offense can do any time out? Well, I think we had some really good plays, some timely plays that matched up well for us. Uh, I think you saw some great catches, great throws. Uh, just blessed to get a win. Four and one, you got a bye week now. Enjoy it. We Congratulations. Will. We will. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Coach, we'll get some rest tonight. Again, 48 to three, the final score. Argos improve to 4-1 on the season. We'll see you on our next TV broadcast November 2nd right here with North Greenville in town. Stick with us on the radio, TV. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the UWS Sports Network.